many hours a day. Um, I probably ride rest in the area of reading the word every day, um, but I probably don't study, study, study it. You know what I mean? Because yeah, because it's too. It's very big. It's very vast. It's very deep, and you have a lot of variable variable interpretations from what scriptures can mean, and because it's a living word. And God can speak to me differently for my life and situation than he will for you if we read the same passage. I've been in enough of these um, kind of video calls where well-meaning, God-loving Christians disagree, you know. Yeah. And those are, mm, at, at, at the least, can be frustrating because I, I long for a day when everybody can be of one mind and one unity in the body of Christ. And I, and I, I don't have an agenda to try to convince you that what I read is universally true to God. I, if someone has a better understanding of scripture than I do, or I perceive they have a better understanding of scripture than I do, I might tend to abandon my view and go with theirs. Um, you see, I'm here purely to inspire if I fail to do so, um, yeah. that really grieves the Holy Spirit because really is when, when you have a relationship with Christ, you will self-correct. And I am nobody to go in there and judge that process, that relationship. I am only here to inspire and I hope Every single time I do succeed. And I think I'm going to start including that in my prayers before the session even begins. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You do inspire. You do. When the other blab we were in when we first met and you came in and we're talking, it was very inspiring. I, I didn't want it to end. Um, Oh, sometimes uh, I just run out of strength, to be honest. <laughs> Yesterday, basically, it had to end because after two hours, I started to lose steam and I had a, I wasn't exactly as mentally sharp and as helpful for people when my answers as I wished. So when, when I'm tired, I can do more harm than good, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, that, that is my ultimate desire, is to inspire people. And if my ways don't inspire, that's very likely they are not correct. Because the Holy Spirit is only comes to inspire. I can, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think inspire believers to walk deeper, fall in love with Jesus more, inspire them to have their eyes open more. You're, they're inspired because the ultimate person doing the, inspi the, the inspiring would be the Holy Spirit. The, so the spirit you are... Prophecy, the spirit of prophecy is Jesus Christ himself. And when he left this realm, before, just before he left, he said, I need to go because the sooner I go, the, yeah, right. the comforter can come. The other comforter can come. Mm -hmm. And he called it specifically comforter. He did not call it the corrector. Yes, yes, yes. Or right. the corrector. He called it the comforter. Mm -hmm. Right. Inspiration has that edge to it, that it, it is a call to action, but it is also makes you, it, it also comforts. I mean, it, 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 it has to keep you at ease over that heals a part of you. At the same time, it calls for action. Amen. That's my experience. And today being Sunday, the biblical entrepreneurship title, I'm going to continue to keep it because, because that's my main purpose. That's why I'm here. Um, but in the weekends, I will always find a topic to balance out the actual work. Um, today, I would like to talk about rest and family um, and how it contributes to business 
and the work of the week. Um, because without rest, we cannot really invest ourselves in, in during the week's Absolutely. time. And I think I'm going to actually um, just the, the, the big in, first inspirational thought, I'm going to hint it out there and then I open it up for conversation, which is that I have searched the word rest in the Bible. Yes, yes, yes. And it automatically brings up for me 200. Maya, Maya, because... Maya, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, let's open up in prayer before we get going. I think oh, that's... thank you so much. Amen, amen. I know, I know you're excited, but uh, and you've got a great word in you. But let's open up in prayer. Amen. <laughs> amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now, and we just commit ourselves unto you, Lord God. We commit our hearts, our our soul unto you, Lord God. We know that you are the Savior. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords, Lord God. And right now, Lord God, we give this discussion over to you, Lord God. We place it in your hands, Lord God, that all good will come out of it, Lord God. And the, those who are looking to be inspired, Lord God, will be inspired. And so right now, we thank you for this awesome woman of God, woman of God Lord God. We ask that you use her, use her for the glory, glorification and the edifying of your body. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you for including inspiration. Yes, Lord. Amen. And um, yes, thank you, JP, for coming on again. Yeah, I just have a question quickly. Yes. Um, how are you going to run this recorded lab? Are you going to are you going to teach for a half hour and then open engagement, or do you want people sitting here while you're talking? And engaging and will you talk two or three minutes and then invite responses for two or three minutes or do you want to talk for a half hour and then open it up well you know, usually what it would be is during the week that i have about a 20 minute presentation about biblical entrepreneurship then i open it up for questions and then i have somebody to take the hot seat for the day for about 20 to 30 minutes, meaning that we're going to take a look at his business and analyze it. And then at the end, we open up for, for theological questions, general questions. That's when the atheists can come up and ask their own questions. But who, okay. the, who can come up? Oh, anybody. I thought yeah. you Yes, that's, that's what what I would like to more, the, more the theological questions. And because before that, I would like to focus on biblical entrepreneurship. But this is the weekend. Yesterday, I had something I could call the Sabbath school. And today, Sunday, I will dedicate it to rest. And that would mean that I have a few thoughts to share about work and rest. And then I will open it up conversation to anyone who is on air and we go on for a while, a good while. And then at the end, we open it up for whoever would like to join us in the conversation, that theological conversations. I, I think I'm going to save that for the end that the, the, those who are non-believers or struggling with their faith would, would have the chance, like at least an hour from now, to, so that we can focus for an hour on the topic of the day. Okay, so I, uh, that was that was a long answer to my question. I'm, I'm asking, do you want people to sit in the seat right now, today, not this yeah. week, but right now in this lab? Do you want people to sit in the seat while you teach, and then you'll uh, open it up? Yes, you're welcome here on air. It's but it's are you? But are are you going to teach for a half hour while we sit here on camera and pick our I nose? Have, I have maybe three minutes amount of speech to share today. Three minutes. Oh, okay. And I just would like to say a few words to int introduce the topic. No Great. speech today. Go for it. Let the show begin. <laughs> yes. So here we are. Um, in order for someone to be a functional service to others and be available to their fullest capacity, 
they need to be prepared in their own subject and expertise as well as we need efficient amount of rest and since i have available today's technology make it possible for me to look up how many times in the bible the word rest occurs and that is 275 times in 265 verses of which the majority of it is of course in the old testament and the revelation eight times and i most um most focused on the actual revelations the revelation book um rest quality not because the rest in older times would not have been interpreted quite the same and but mostly because the um fourth commandment we discussed yesterday about taking the day of rest on the sabbath is strongly reflected in the book of revelation in the end time it becomes increasingly more significant for the people of god to take their rest intentionally according to with his um desire of on the seventh day why and here i would like to point out revelation 14 verse 13 and i heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the lord from henceforth ye saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them and just a few um, verses earlier in Revelation 14, 11, even more significant thing is being um, highlighted by the John who writes these words. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up to ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image whosoever receiveth the mark of his name this is my inspiration for the entire work i do not necessarily because i don't because i i help people to do their business according to god's ways but the very first thing i like to draw their attention to is worship and rest because because whom you worship is a, is um, going to determine also who provides for you. Is it the beast or is it God? And the distinguishing factor of those who serve the beast that they can no, find no rest anywhere on the surface of the earth. And here I would like to open it up for... Um, further inputs and inspiration. This is the topic of the discussion for today. Oh, what happened to Curtis? He probably needs to check back in. Uh, he, said, he, said, he said he was reading. Was reading. Uh, uh, if you pay attention to the side chat on the left, yeah. you'll see you'll that there see may be conversations going on between those, between those watching, watching the audience 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 or audience. Audience. Is, is that, is that we, we have an, we have a problem hearing you jp come on up nick we i am really anxious to hear what you've got to say we just introduced revelation 14 11. yeah i i just called nick in just a moment ago and he was available so he came right in and you're lagging pretty bad again maya hmm. You might want to try refreshing one more time. Oh, I'll stay here until she does. <laughs> okay. 
What? You're in guitar mode? Nick, what does that mean? Yeah, just dropped I just dropped in to support Maya. Um, I think she wants to teach on biblical rest, not biblical entrepreneurship, or maybe biblical entrepreneurship. Uh, but we're talking about rest, Sabbath rest, maybe. The so, kind of replenishing and refreshing oneself is part of one's business, making ourselves available for service. You only can give when you refresh and replenish your energy. And also with special emphasis on the uh, Revelation 14.11, where it is said that those who worship the beast in the end days can find no rest anywhere on the surface of the earth. Revelation 14, is that? 14.11, yes. Okay, maybe we should uh, post that up in the... How do you actually do that? Post? Yes, how do I post in the underneath the recording button uh no that's not over on the right hand side are you on your um are you on a, um are you on a web browser or are you on your tablet i am on my laptop and using okay. google chrome yeah on the right hand side do you see the chat over here i just uh i just dropped in the chat i just pasted it copied and pasted copied and pasted and then how did you make it go over to the left side Oh, that's those are questions. I didn't post a question. Are you is she, is she seeing things in reverse from what I'm seeing? No, I don't. Yes, it does see questions, but that is that like a highlighted place to also post something when you want to bring special emphasis to it. Okay, I just put a sample question on the left. You say the left. I hope you don't mean the right, but I put a sample question over on the left. And now you're looking on the right. I see you're looking on now you're looking on the left. Now you're looking in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're. So, what are you asking me? How do you put a question? You asked me how do you post on the left. The only thing you can post on the left is either a tweet out or a Facebook post um, mention or a question. So, how you do a question? Is that your question for me, Maya? Is how do you? Do a yes. question. How do you put it on underneath the pause record record the recording button? On how the do you put what? How do I, I put something there? You can only put questions there, and you do a question. I gave you a sample. Do you see it says this is a sample question on the left? Do you see that? Yeah, and you put it in in the right. But how did it go over to the left? Because I did a slash Q space and then typed in this is a sample question i started off on the right with a slash q space then type whatever you want your question to be do you understand yes then there is also a change of topic uh, yep yep you you're the host you can change the topic. You can do several things there, right? What is light mode or dark mode? Oh, just that just turns the 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 browser uh, colors light or dark. Right now it's dark, so you could turn it light. It's just something silly. <laughs> Some people might prefer their browser experience to be light or dark. Right now it's dark. Okay, I posted something on the left. I did it. Yay! <laughs> thank you. So thank you for your patience. Um, now you can you can put that question in a seat. You can move it over from the left to an open seat. If you want to do that. Yes. How do I do that? Uh, well, if you're you have to. Uh, maybe t is there a box that says answer the question? Yes. Click it and see what happened. There you go. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah. Now, when you're done, you can exit out. I believe there's an X on the yeah. top right. So when you're finished, you can exit. Instead, I'm going to quote it, and then we can start discussing it. Yeah. Typically, someone from the side on the uh, would ask a question, and then you would put it in a box and answer it and after it's answered then you would go to the next question maybe 
Yeah, okay. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. This was my initial inspiration for those who overwork and not all that productive at the end. Service to others requires giving a part of you, giving all of you. So you, that you need to take some time to replenish yourself and commune with the Lord. Nurture, nurturing oneself, especially on Sundays. I worship on Saturdays and I take Sundays off, but it is going to be very individual. One day a week to replenish your own self with the word that that continuously just with communion with the Lord is absolutely essential for someone who wants to serve him all week around. And this is the reason why we had the topic today, rest and work. As I mentioned earlier, um, 275 times in the Bible, in 265 verses, we can, God refers to the word rest. And um, even though we have not prepared, I have not given anybody a notice to come prepared. I wonder if from your, your um, just from the top of your head, if there is any reference in the Bible to rest that that is important to you and you, we could we could bring it in here to look at the word rest from all possible angles and approach it yeah there is another reference but I was not prepared to do study I thought I was coming here to listen <laughs> yes I eventually, don't you worry, once we get going, it will be a lot pouring out. Okay. I have a, there's a Hebrews, I think a Hebrews 4, uh, verse 10. Uh, Hebrews 4, verse 10, anyone who enters God's rest, uh, for anyone who enters God's rest also, res, also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Um, but I think there's a deeper meaning to that. The Hebrews 4 uh, and verse 10, but I believe probably verses before that. It re The reference is that God, um, just as God rested on the seventh day, then anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works. Uh, you know, implying on the seventh day or one day a week. I don't know that it strictly has to be on Sunday. It could be any any day. The, the point of the verse to me as I read it is that you rest one day a week um, and Americans do it on Sunday, Christians. So, uh, but I think there's a deeper meaning in that. Um, and I know I've been in a study where that deeper meaning was was expounded upon. Yes, we have specifically looked at historically the the day of worship and how it changed over the time and why it changed. Also, we have entered as far as we possibly could the emotion of worship and how it is um, originating in a sense of awe and wonder. So yesterday's recording is might be something worthwhile to go to at some point. But to, for today, um, one of one of these my favorite ones um, that includes Jesus in it is he himself with his own mouth in Luke nine fifty eight says. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He was really at the peak of his mission when he said that. And he's not referring here to being homeless. But right after he actually says this, he, he, he goes down to the shore and steps into a boat. And the boat takes him a little bit offshore to have space from the multitude 
and be able to teach from there. It, it gives the impression of being overcrowded and overwhelmed, being in service. Yes, the seventh day, Nick, it is the seventh day that is supposed to be worshipped and not the first. Amen. <laughs> Going to refresh again. There is so many aspects to the concept of rest um, that over 260 different aspects of it in each mention of the Bible is, is, is possible to even bring up. And that Jesus had that sense of overwhelm, but he was on a mission. And some other places he even mentions why not to work on rest on, on, on Sabbath. My father works on the Sabbath day. God himself works on the Sabbath day. And I would like to find that specifically because it goes in complete contradiction to everything we have so far mentioned. Oh, wow, I'm by myself again. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these. And so that will be amazed. Um... Is anybody still here? <laughs> Thank you, Curtis. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I started feeling Maya. like <laughs> Maya. everybody disappeared Maya. on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want you to con I want you just to continue to be encouraged because you got an awesome word on you, and that we are still listening to you. And don't let the enemy get you distracted. Uh, don't look at the water. You know, don't look at what's going on. But just continue. You are doing wonderful. So even if, if even if no one is in a seat with you or next city next to you, you're doing absolutely wonderful. So thank you. A lot, a lot of people are encouraged and inspired by what you're doing. So uh, don't look at the um, don't yes. look at the waves. <laughs> I am looking for the verse that Jesus says that even his father works on the Sabbath, which is actually goes quite contradictory what I have been trying to make the point for today. But what he's referring to is that the Pharisees and the Sadducees accuse him for taking the sheep out of the pit, saving the sheep, um, accuse him for breaking the Sabbath. And his response is, Um, that even his father works on the Sabbath. And I would have liked to put it out there because I really don't have all that much insight into this i would like us to explore it together perhaps one perhaps, hand, one perhaps. hand the ten commandments and jesus encourages to use the sabbath for rest and that is the fourth commandment in the same time he mentions the father working on the sabbath day Amen. so what do we do with this well can you post, <laughs> can you post the verse can you post um, Put, yes, I am. Just, or just tell me what it is. Tell me what what you're what verse you're talking about. Yes, and that way we can all read it. And then, um, if you want to open it to an open discussion, then we can do that. Because uh, Maya, you have a teaching style. Um, the way oh. the way you blab is you command um, an audience to listen and not engage you. You have a teaching lecturing style, like you're standing in front and everybody is seated watching you. That is your, that's your style. So that's why that's why people are not coming in right away to take a seat because we're listening to you because you are like a teacher. 
Amen. And when the teacher teaches, nobody talks. Right. So with, if you want engagement, then you have to say, please come in. What do you think, brown boy, about this question? Or what do you think, JP? Please take a seat. I'd like to discuss this. Do you have a comment? Uh, or invite Nick to come and take a seat. So I think maybe it's our culture. Uh, as Americans, we may not necessarily jump right in and interrupt you, right? <laughs> so that's that's why I asked you, are you going to teach for a half hour? If so, I'm not going to sit on camera here for a half hour and pick my nose. So <laughs> especially since you're recording this and I don't know how you're going to use the recording. Okay, this recording so far had included very little material I'm going to not cut out, <laughs> not edit. Um, but I am extremely grateful for the input. This is exactly what I am trying to change that will give a structure to the entire blob. Um, I have done my That's best fine. to introduce. This is where I run out of material. I had this three minutes in me, and that's all. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I doubt that. I doubt that. Right, right, right. Then you are not refreshing your screens. I'm really trying to draw you in and keep you on screen to help me out now because I have presented my dilemma in three different proposals, and I don't <laughs> think it is actually clear first is rest as a need as a need human need for replenishment and it's part of work absolutely rest as the day of worship and under the title of keeping the sabbath and rest when jesus finds no rest from the multitude and jesus keeping the sabbath day or breaking the Sabbath day according to the Sadducees and Pharisees, oh. but he's he's contradicting everything we know about rest by saying that even my father works on the Sabbath. But but in, in fact, in fact, he's not contradicting because the fact that God is everywhere and all knowing, He's always at work. The Word itself is alive and it's always at work. So yes. there's, there's no contradicting. And this is exactly why I want to open up the question. I want to hear all these input yeah, because sure. this is how far my knowledge went so far. Yeah, it's, it's um, okay. And that's what we're here for. We're here to edify, encourage each other. That's what we're here for as Christians. So, Yeah. Why don't you, Maya, why don't you X out the question in one of the squares because we're finished with that question so that you can open a seat if you like, if you want to. Because uh, uh, there may be somebody else who would like to join and answer that question. It's a very direct question. There seems to be controversy in the use of the word rest. Okay. As in I found, I have found the verse, John five seventeen. In his defense, Jesus said to them, "My Father is always at work Amen. Amen. to his to this very day, and I too am working." And yeah. this has puzzled me, especially because um, on the seventh day, God rested. That's what Bible, Old Testament is about. And how come that Jesus says that my father always worked? And yes, I heard you, Curtis, yeah, please repeat yourself for those who just joining the discussion. And I would so much like to work on this a little more entirely. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want to hear more. Well, um, God is omnipresent, Amen. omniscient, yes. and omnipotent, yes. all-powerful, yes. all-knowing, and all present everywhere. Right. And it also is biblical that God never sleeps. Right. So I think the word rest in that in the John... 17 517 reference and i and i'm not a scholar you know mm -hmm. uh, uh but my impression is that rest there's a different meaning to the word rest in the creation account in the genesis account for example um but yeah i don't think god's on a holiday if you want to pray on sunday he, god is like you get like an email response out of the office. We'll be back Monday. You know, <laughs> <That'd be awful. laughs> yeah. But 
I, I think that, uh, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. I think that uh, that's in fact what God is actually saying to us, uh, and that the fact that he rested on the seventh day, that he was done, that God was done with his work. But in fact, that man will rest for the, uh, the replenishing, the re restoration to uh, uh, revisit certain things throughout the week. And, and again, just to restore ourselves. But God himself never rests because the word, amen, praise the Lord. Because the word itself is God. The word, when we speak words, those words will go on. They never rest. And I, as I explained on yesterday, uh, Maya, during our discussion, is that the words themselves mean what they mean. So whether you're an atheist or a believer, the word stop means stop. It doesn't matter what side of the fence you come from or what, the, what country you come from. It doesn't matter. The word encourage means encourage. And it doesn't matter what side of the fence you come from, what country you come from, it means what it means. And so in fact, that when something is encouraged, it never stops being encouraged. The word itself means what it means. Jesus, God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, uh, love. God is love. So love never, ever stopped being love. So that word never rests. It continues being what it is from the very beginning, uh, from the onset. From the onset, it was love. In the end, it was love. Though Satan tried to destroy him through people, through accusations, through uh, just through the hardship and the pain and the suffering that he had went through, love was, love was on a course to show itself love. Love never ever stopped being love. So the words themselves mean what they mean. So they will go on to, it's kind of like a, throwing a rock in the water, if you will, and how the, the, the water will, uh, the rock will create a rippling effect in water in a pond or something. And as that, as that wave goes out further and further, it initially obviously starts small, but it gets further, it, as it goes further and further, it gets bigger and bigger. And it is the same with the word. The word never loses its power. Oh. Thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord. It never loses its power. So the word, in fact, it never, ever rests. So I, God I, is God is the word. And the word is God. God never rests. As people, as human beings, we will need the rest because it is opportunity. Physical bodies. Yes, absolutely. And still, I have a question here. God created the world and man in it in right. six days. Then he rested on the seventh day, right? And he said he had he basically has Jesus at some point says that the Sabbath day was made for man, not right. man for the Sabbath, right? Basically, when God makes a statement on the seventh day to rest, he created rest, amen. For man, it doesn't mean that he's going to rest on any other day. I absolutely, say, absolutely. Because his, his work is keeping the law. He's absolutely. upholding the law. He right. is the law. Right. Yes, absolutely. And if absolutely. we look at the, the, uni the laws of the universe, the physical laws, the mathematical laws, the astrological laws, that is the language of God. That's God at work. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So actually... On the seventh day when he took a rest, not because he was tired, mm -hmm. but because he knew that man is going to be in need of rest. Well, that well not to create rest. Amen. Praise Lord. Well, it, it goes. Hello. Yeah, I, I'm here. It, it yeah. goes back to it goes back to what Isaiah said: is that that the world the word will accomplish that which it was sent out to accomplish. So, thank you, Holy Spirit. But on the seventh day, God rested. His work was done. So what was complete was going to accomplish that which was already spoken. It was going to take shape. It was going to take form of what was already spoken. What God had done, the work that he had completed, it was prepared and it was on its way. And it was, it was like that rock thrown into the water, that rippling effect that was started off small, it got bigger and it got bigger and got bigger. So is God's word. And that is what the relationship is about. That the relationship starts off small. The Bible says if you have if you have faith as a mustard seed, 
So it starts off small and it gets bigger and gets bigger and gets bigger. And so from that same seed, it feeds all of God's creation. And uh, it, it's like he spoke the word. Amen. It has, it has, he set into motion. It has yes. been put out over there and he does not go there to change it. Absolutely. Hallelujah. He, he, yes. He's Hallelujah. not going to get in the proof that his providential law yes. is like if you decide to jump off the cliff, unfortunately, he's not going to be there to catch you. Absolutely. Because, <laughs> because yeah. you are in knowledge of that gravity yeah. is going to smash you to the ground. And <laughs> right, right. you do not have the reverence for his already spoken for law. Right. A law he already set into motion. Absolutely. Then you're going to have to carry the consequences. That's absolutely that, that, that the whole process of presumptuousness. Right. That and is the, one of the biggest warning things I like to put out there. It's not the yeah. same as being saved by Jesus on the cross or being presumptuous. The law is already in motion. It yes, yes. To be revered. Right. And the, <laughs> Thank you, JP. So, yes. um, go ahead, Curtis. No, I was just going to say that th that the word itself is the law. We are held. We're either we're either set free by the word, or we're held captive by the word. Mm -hmm. We're either free or in bondage by the word. So the word, the Bible says the word is alive. It, in fact, is alive. Uh, the scriptures say there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. You say this word can either set you free. Absolutely. Or you captive. I would like to add to this a little bit. The word Absolutely. can also make you free. Right. It can also make Free, which is very different from being set free. Yes, I, I, amen. I, I, can I, 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 recreate you when yes, you amen. hear it. It can change you forever, instantaneously. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. That's that's what about you, you, that's, you're right. That's you're, being reborn, Christian. Right, right. You're you're absolutely correct on that, Maya. There's a, a a difference between in the scripture say you will be made free. So there is so, tell. Curtis, we lost you. Oh, oh well, you're, it was kind of like a delay in your audio. That's why I was waiting. So I didn't know if you were saying something. But no, I was just saying you're absolutely correct. Uh, there is a difference between being made free and being uh, set free. Because there is creation. There is ab a creation. Absolutely. And absolutely. recreation goes. And recreation absolutely. in our vocabulary, isn't that amazing what, what additional meaning it has to it? Yeah. You recreate yourself by going out to exercise or taking a walk in nature. Right. We call right. it recreational. Right. Now right. imagine if you add it to the meaning of the rest day. When right. you take a day away from your work, away from your audience, away spending it with the people who are closest to you, and you focus on recreational activities, right. you right. are reborn, remade intentionally that yeah, we, was, be, that's part of rest being 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 rejuvenated actually your 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 body being rejuvenated your mind being rejuvenated yeah absolutely so that's and very it's true, only right? possible in the state of rest you do not yes. you cannot recreate yourself when you are applying yourself mm -mm, absolutely not it is I, two I, different I, activities you are either applying yourself right. giving yourself or you are recreating yourself now the renewal of the mind we are down right. to the root of daily renewal of the mind. What right. have you got to say about that, Curtis? Well, I mean, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Well, I mean, daily renewal, of the, daily re, renewing our mind daily, uh, it is essential. You know, we wash our faces. Uh, the body will shed its cells uh, due to taking a, you know, bathing our bodies, uh, washing our face, and so there, are, uh, uh, there's a cleansing process of it. You know, like we were just talking about with the rest. So the rest is essential to not only being rejuvenated our bodies, but allowing the old 
to shed to shed the to remove the burdens you know of of, of this life you know to shed the to shed the old skin if you will so I, I think that's what it has to do with you know again renewing our mind because in order to take the Bible says uh, the Bible says not to worry because we have enough worries even in this moment this day so don't worry about tomorrow because there are enough worries in this day right now. So right. renewing our mind, our mind daily, is the idea that we need to be available to, to the strongholds, the attacks right now, in this moment, that rather than trying to- Self-care. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So and we're just making us- So basically you are bringing in, illustrating it through taking care of yourself in the shower and washing your- Right. Care of your right, body right. to the renewal of the the Absolutely. mind, which is Absolutely. what you do daily. It's a daily being lost in the Bible and its word in a daily basis. Would you call that rest? Communion with God, just like yeah, absolutely, Sabbath. absolutely. It's it's the, it's the same thing with Martha and Mary. When uh, Martha was busy trying to, to prepare for the festival, Mary was at Jesus' feet. And you know, and, and she made a she made an issue with it, but Jesus said, No, she's actually better off than you are. Because he Jesus was actually getting ready to leave. Mm -hmm. You know, um in this on, on in that story, my favorite thing to put in there, I always like to put it in there because there is a lot of judgment I hear in that context by Mary being better off washing Jesus' feet, absolutely communing with him, and Martha is being a busybody. Now, mm -hmm. I believe that Martha didn't speak up for the reason that undermined the communion they had, but because she couldn't get away from her duties. She wanted, well, she desired to be at the foot of Jesus. Well, and, and, and amen, amen. And, and, and it wasn't so much, I mean, the, 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 the festival was important that they were preparing for, but Jesus was saying, well, there, there will come a time where I won't be with you. So Mary was in fact, as Jesus was saying, she was in the right place because though she did not know that he was prepared to leave this earth and be persecuted. But I know something here that you might haven't noticed before. Okay, okay. And we, would, we, would, we could study that paragraph if I would want to take the time off to look for it right now, mm -hmm. is that what is actually Mary doing in the kitchen? Is She's preparing a meal for a festival or something. Mm -hmm. the, in that very chapter earlier, all the mm -hmm. herbs are being mentioned. And those very herbs, if you study those very herbs, mm -hmm. The very same word herbs are traditionally in the Hebrew 2,000 and 3,000 years ago when it happened, 2,000 years ago, have been traditionally used for anointing the dead bodies. Amen, amen. When, before they are laid to rest. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it chronologically, this event is taking place two to three days before crucifixion. Right. right. So I wouldn't rush to conclusions because because if you put this into text and have additional information mm -hmm. to what is just being indicated in the Bible there, mm -hmm. you learn that Mary is very likely, it's, I, I cannot do conclusively make this right, statement, right. very mm -hmm. likely is preparing the very ointments and Amen. lotions that are being used for later on, she takes to the tomb wanting to honor her lord's dead body and she Amen. could not well find him well so she could have already there yes. very likely be preparing those right. very herbs right well and my question is is it really so hard to imagine that she is feeling left out in that it, scenario being in the kitchen between mary and jesus Amen, amen. So she and, has to be on duty. She cannot right, right. rest at that point. And right, she would right. love to be there. And right. Mary has anointed his feet with her tears, washed with her hair. Yes. 
Right, right. I just don't like to put Martha in the dark light so much of being well, judged. I, I, I don't, I don't, I mean. I it, know it's not you. It is just a general. Right, right. Absolutely. absolutely. That I sometimes like to challenge. Yeah, sure, I, sure. Because I hear it too many times. Martha, sure. as I see her, she would have loved to be there and be part of that communion sure. with Jesus. But that was Mary's privilege. And right. guess what? When later on Mary goes to the tomb, cannot find the dead body to yes, anoint. Yes. Amen. His body was anointed for the burial in yes, the kitchen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well said. By the very earth that Martha was preparing. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I, I, I can appreciate what you're saying, uh, uh, Maya. And like I said, uh, that's what the scripture says. And I think sometimes we like to infer our own thinking, meaning that you know, we, we don't, we're not saying that Martha was not important <laughs> because she very much w was important. But I think that we don't want to kind of get our own feelings mixed in and say, wait a minute, what about Martha? You know, don't forget about Martha. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I, I have been a Martha for way too long. Right, right. Amen. <laughs> slide so easily <laughs> all the time the interpretations i hear are coming from right. an angle. oh martha didn't understand nothing no, no, no. <laughs> I, I was not i was not implying that at all and i and i, I appreciate i appreciate your explanation absolutely that was just a, uh that was a good job i really appreciate that um uh, definitely shed light on um us uh, uh, and then and know, that is an incredible study in itself to actually absolutely. studying the herbs Right. Of what is being mentioned, and especially in that paragraph, right. in, right. in that um, right. what is it called chapter, because right. if you compare it to what was this, the role of those herbs mm -hmm. in two thousand years ago in in Israel, you will be very surprised how many of them are matching the burial herbs and mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Well, absolutely. So we we don't we definitely don't want to forget about Martha. So she was very instrumental in the, <laughs> the work of the Lord. And uh, so, and I know I know God, uh, the Lord recognizes that as well, Maya. Yes, so, <laughs> so. that back in those days when everything was done from scratch, yes, you could yes. not leave the kitchen for ten minutes just to take care of something else. Right, right, right. It's, right. A, it's a responsibility. You you sure. walk away from that activity. You put it on the side, but at the time you went in, something is ruined. It, it, it and then you right. have spoiled the meal for that, and you are not very rich, right? You can't right, afford right, just right. to throw it out. You can start right. from all from the beginning. And people who have not had that responsibility maybe don't picture it. Oh, the kitchen is not all that important. After right, 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 this right. is so much right. more important. And Martha right. is struggling; is internally split in half. Now, which way am I supposed to really serve my Lord now? Right. Amen. Because amen. And that's or yes, feet. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that um that right you right there the statement that you just made in regards to how Martha was split in regards to okay, well, I could, you know, I could be in a place where Mary's at right now, she's serving the Lord, or I could continue to preparing this uh for this uh, uh for this uh ceremony or this uh preparing the, the oils and the different things and you know right there what you just said is very interesting because i think that's what we 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 all go through from time to time in life lord which direction do i go what do i do um that this is calling me and this is calling me the, you know the kids got things going on i've got things going on with the job so we can definitely all of us can be definitely pulled in different directions and what does the lord say the lord say wait a, wait a minute well, in fact, everything is going on, but you're better off at my feet, just as Mary is. And I am and, uh, so again, it's not too that we have come to this point because this is exactly what the everyday person is struggling with now. Yes. And when yes. he has to, he split between duty and yes. especially if we are working for ourselves, running our Amen. own business, how hard yes, it is to tear a little time away from for, for mm -hmm. it. To spend it with family, spend yes. it with the Lord, or to be self. Amen. And I just Amen. said the whole to-do list again. Spend exactly, it with your exactly. family, <laughs> spend it with the Lord, and spend it with yourself. That's already a to-do right. list. Right, this right. Business. And I, I think that's awesome because it, it, it totally ties into your subject being rest. Because, uh, you know, 
it, you know, we're being pulled, all of us in life, we're being pulled by so many different things. And God would just say, you know, it's better off that you would rest in him. And perhaps that's what the same thing Mary was doing. She was resting in him and at his feet, but resting in him. And again, we're just, you know, we can, we all are, we're all pulled in all kinds of different directions, but the Lord is possibly saying, hey, it's better that you rest in me and concern yourself with those things that are, you know, maybe insignificant, you know, and again, not saying that Martha's insignificant. So. <laughs> um, what, what I would say is that I would like to, I would like to see Jesus put into the, to the spotlight right now, because he is our ultimate um, Amen. Uh, Amen. example and role model, both in our mission and in lifestyle. How did Jesus handle when he was on a mission? And at some point he even mentions that foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Do you consider that a complaint, Curtis? Is God, is, God, is Jesus complaining here? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely not. It's awesome because, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. It's absolutely not a complaint. It's 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 saying, and I think was it uh, JP said something earlier. What maybe you said something earlier for the fact that, um, uh, hang on, JP, I'm working on changing the title right now. But uh, it was uh, to the point that um, Jesus seeing that the okay, how am I spelling biblical? Because I look at Jesus as, a, as an advocate and a, a, a divine lead, lead magnet for mm-hmm. Absolute, a heavenly absolutely. kingdom. Absolutely, and that's the re- and that's exactly what. Who praise the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. For the heavenly that's kingdom. A, but 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 that's exactly what Jesus was saying, Maya. That's exactly what he was saying. He was saying that he's being pulled on so many different direct. He's being pulled on all the needs that the people are having. Praise the Lord. And, and in fact, there is no place for the son of man. He wasn't talking about, he, w- he was talking about himself. Mm-hmm. But when you're doing the will of God, there is no place to rest. You're not ever going to be at rest because of what, you know, again, back to the scripture. Because even your attitude is a work. A- absolutely. And, and, and Jesus, right after he says that, a few verses later, steps into the boat that was sparked right by the lake, by the sea, oh, and he draws off shore. He continues to teach, but from a distance. It's yes, like yes, 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 that yes. back of water being in between. And how kind of a desperation does that show to you? He right, had right. to he had to puddle out onto the water so that the people would keep off him. <laughs> I think if you had a speaker, you probably understand what right, he right, feels. Right. Created himself a stage, a puppet to be amen, in a amen. safe distance from them. Amen. Amen. Um, and, and really, and it, it's so true what you're saying, Maya, because can you just imagine of just just all the mouths to feed, you know, you know, all people are pulling you from, on pulling on you from all directions and, and everyone has a need. It doesn't matter whether they're rich, poor, or it, it doesn't matter. Rich, poor, somewhere in the middle, everyone has a need. And he's, and, and he's being pulled on. And he's the ultimate entrepreneur. Absolutely. 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 Which- is why I have actually chosen um, my program to be called the Jesus Printer. Because Amen. when Jesus Amen. chosen the disciples, yes, he actually called them for action. Yes. yes Nowadays, yes, yes. disciples in churches come together to study, discuss, and fellowship. But when they go home throughout the week, the discipleship is not much not much doing is involved right 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 but the entrepreneur is all calling for action and taking action amen well said entrepreneurs are the modern day disciples because they apply the the actual compassion that they 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 
observe from Jesus in the walk with Jesus. Right, right. This is this is really awesome because I I think it's just that we just you know as Christians and especially if you're you know loving the Lord we just we just need to think about the scriptures you know we just think like you said uh, you know in like how you explained to me earlier in regards to what Martha was doing you know we in fact just need to think about the scripture and I think I think that the problem sometimes lies in that the word the word of God says that He will confine the wise because in truth. The, it, it, it's it's not so difficult. It really isn't so difficult. But the wisdom of this world, he confines it because you can't reach him like that. And sometimes we, we, we try to have these intellectual arguments with people. You can't reach him like that. And you're going to find it. And, and, and that's the reason why it's... Hey there, uh, Fast Pace 7. Um, so... And, and trying to develop a relationship with uh, with God, with Christ. And I think it's so, and, and, I, and even the difference between Jesus and God is important to discuss as well, because we, many people are saying God, God, but we also need to know the man, Jesus Christ himself, who walked the earth so that we can relate to him. We don't really, we can't really relate to God. The Jesus in the carnal body, yes, had absolutely, the same needs as the carnal body. Yes, absolutely. When, when he so we... says that he was tried in every way, yes. Yes, as a human yes. can be tried and tempted, he did not yes. sin. Yes, but absolutely. He was tried in every way. Then he means it that it can only happen in a physical body and that is also the limitations of the physical body yes, this is exactly absolutely. his relatability to us is the, the son of man need would have needed rest he needed distance right. it, imagine well, i have been a teacher for a few years mm -hmm. three or four years not anymore um and it is amazing how you get through a day you finish all your teachings and in sure. big time you really need the recess, at least as yeah, much yeah, yeah. kids do. <laughs> I don't know why, why in America yeah. they have such a short recess time. <laughs> yeah. What do you say, Maya? It's, it's not enough time. Huh? <laughs> it's, 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 it's totally necessary. It, it's yes, one yes. of the best parts of the day when you actually get to sure. rest. Sure, but sure. I would like to stir back a little bit to my question earlier of the renewal of the mind. Yes, and yeah. because I think the rest is not necessarily always no action. We associate rest with no action way too much. Right, right, right. While what Mary was doing in Jesus's, what Martha was doing in the kitchen, right, right. even though her words were testifying a little bit differently, right, but right. they were both communing with the Lord. Her yes. mind was, otherwise she wouldn't be like sitting or... I'm impatient that I want to be there because her mind was there and her hands were in the kitchen. Sure, sure. Right? Mm -hmm. And and what you to know here is that when your mind is with the Lord, you have peace. That is yes, true. Yes, progress. absolutely. That's the scripture. Communion, yes, communion yes. is as is the true rest. Yes, 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 yes. Communication. And when, when God tells us to set the seventh day apart for worship and spend it with him. It's supposed to be spent with him. He yes, refers yes, to yes. communion. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. not what we do nowadays, that we wake up at six o'clock, we get, get ourselves all beautiful, and then we rush into the car and we drive maybe two hours to make it to church on time, and then we prepare the stage and we run around in the background preparing for everybody to show up. It's a lot of activity. Right, right, Yes, right. we do it in service to the Lord and in the house of the Lord. Right, amen, amen. But why would it be so different from all the other work you do during the week? It is still, you see, what I do during the week, I do it just as much for the Lord. 
as if I would be doing it in church on the weekend. Right, right, right. Well, when I, I think my house or that, do service to others. I, I think the, um, the uh, I guess the, for lack of a better word, uh, the issue there is, is the same as um, religion, relationship. And many people think that if you're religious or you practice religion, it's the same as having a relationship. Mm-hmm. And in fact, and in fact, there are two different things. I um, I would say uh, it's very hard for me to maintain a mind mind of rest please. and communion when my, when I am running around doing things, activity. It distracts right. me from the very purpose of the day. Right, I, and I, and I think and I think you just praise Lord. You just really answered your question, Maya, in regards to what Martha was doing. You, if you if you listen to what you just said, you just answered your question in regards to how even though Martha was in her place preparing the uh, the oils, it was still in a place where she was being busy, being occupied, but yet not present, not fully present with the Lord, as Mary had been. And again, it doesn't take away from Martha, but the fact is that to be present with the Lord, uh, and there's a scripture. I, that, there's a scripture for that. To be absent, absent, to be absent. It's going to come to me. I'll have to look up, look it up. But there's a scripture for that. And uh, any event, um, uh, it, it's. I think it's the difference between religion and relationship. Uh, what we we think that religion is the same thing as a relationship, though the practice, which the word religion means, is to practice. A person can read their paper, newspaper, at five o'clock religiously, yeah. and that is the same thing as practice. And they could come to a point where there's a they they become faithful at that practice and reading that paper five o'clock each day. So they are practicing what they believe, or at least come to. Yeah. It's, it's important. So, uh, I, important. I would be very careful here, and that's probably what I'm trying to protect the character of Martha from, right. is that. She is not a beast worshiper because she has no rest at the time mm-hmm. when Jesus is there. Her rest right. has to be scheduled later on when she's done with her duties. Right, right, right. right but right. that does not turn her into a beast worshiper. A- and Revelation, Revelation will give you that little bit of feel. Right, right, so, right. right. Well, we well I, I think, I, I think Maya, I appreciate what you're saying. I, I think you're kind of getting yourself personally tr- caught up in it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I definitely appreciate what you're saying. And again, not t- I'm not taking anything away from Martha. I think I'm just using Martha to explain in regards to what Jesus's comment was to say that Mary was really in essentially in a, in a, in a better place. And it, it does not take away from Martha. Let me say that again, not take anything away from Martha, but it also describes the fact that how we as people can be, yes, love the Lord, but yet busy doing other things. But yet what's in, at hand, what's at stake right now is the communion. What's really yeah. at stake is the communion right now, because thank you. Hang on one second. Hang on. Praise the Lord. Because though Jesus was getting ready to be, to, to be, to go. Yeah, exactly. To go, to be with his father, they were preparing for this. And then I think it's essentially to recognize that it's can also be the very thing in our lives that we know not what tomorrow brings, but let's prepare in this day. Let's prepare Mm -hmm. where we're at for it. Because we don't know what's going to happen from day one tomorrow or two, three days later, but yet we're prepared for it. Yeah. It, it is a struggle of the human condition. Absolutely, before absolutely. I, before, before I hand it over to Stevie, I just would like to mention here: mm-hmm. it is this is the very inspiration why I started my project, the Heavenscape Retreat, mm-hmm. because even though it has not to cost yet, the whole goal of creating a retreat is a symbol of and hopefully that people can come and take rest and distinguish mm-hmm. themselves 
as worshipers of the true God. Yes, yes. And they can they can be the Mary. You know, they can sit at Jesus' feet and pardon themselves from the day's activities. And again, not to say that Martha's activities were not important. I need to stress that. Martha's going to be running the retreat. <laughs> a- absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Stevie. Hi, guys. Um, I'm, I'm actually speaking to you guys from Belfast in Northern hey. Ireland. Mm. Hey, Steve? And I'm a fellow believer myself. I'm a Christian. Yeah. And this is amazing. I mean, God is providing this particular type of, you know, communication base for us to speak yes. as saints in light. Yes, yes. You know, while the time remains before Amen. Christ comes back. Yes, Lord. Good and point. it's a blessing that what a blessing. To communicate as brothers and sisters. It's absolutely yes. fantastic. And and, and yeah. thank you so much for inviting me, well, for having me on this show. Yeah. And we're two or more gathered, you know, Christ yes, is among yes. us already. Oh, yeah. You know that yeah. to be true. And I'm sure you can feel it in your soul right now as I'm saying this, because it's the yes, truth of God. And the thing is, um, I appreciate what both of you guys are saying about resting in God. And, you know, we have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes, 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 we yes, we yes. we are already seated in the heavenly places yes, in Christ. Lord. Yes, Lord. Even though our bodies are down here on earth, our souls are seated with Christ right now in heaven. Yes, Lord. It's it's so amazing. You know, yes, we're Lord. waiting on the Lord to return. You know that. I love you, Stevie. And it's such a struggle down here on earth. It's getting dark down here, but yes, we're Lord. going home soon. Amen. And Christ Christ is coming back for us. He's, yes, he's going to bring us out of this yes, nightmare Lord. existence down here. And we are, the darker it gets, the, the brighter we're going to become as saints in light. Absolutely. Absolutely. You Absolutely. know, the, the, the word saint means separated by God and for God. Yes, Lord. That's what we are here to do. Yes, we're Lord. here to just shout out salvation to people. Yes, Lord. And yes, Lord. We're, we're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yes, I, I don't know if you believe that, but that's oh, true. Absolutely, brother. You have to. And in uh, in that just... TV, I would really like to acknowledge the people who created love and making it available for free. Yeah. I think they are doing an incredible service to God just now, and we have to acknowledge them. Thank you so absolutely. much. Thank you so absolutely. much, love creators. We love absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, this is an amazing conversation. Sure. Uh, you know, I remember I've read so much about, you know, God's family, you know, over the centuries. And I might not know much about the world, but I always remember the things about God because I love him so much. Yes, yes, yes. Lord. It's, it's yes, Lord. almost I have a photographic memory, but it's not a photographic memory. It's God helps yes. to help. Helps me to remember these things. Yes, yes, yes. You yes. know that's what God does. He, he remembers. Wow. He helps you to remember God's word. And yes, yes, wow. yes, yes. It's a spiritual blessing for us to be given yes, that gift is. of knowledge yes, uh, to impart with other people because yes, we we are parts of the body of Christ, yes. and yes. we are extensions of of Him. Yes, Lord. And, and you know, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go, go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry. I would like to hear more about your memories with God. God. Yes, Lord. Amen. Well, growing up in Belfast in Northern Ireland, right? Um, I was born into a Roman Catholic family. And I remember what you were saying earlier on tonight about religion. Yeah. You know, man made religion and systems of tradition, etc. And when God saved me and I asked Christ into my life, God showed me very clearly from Scripture about the danger of worshipping idols, Amen. statues, you know, that God is not in a, in a piece of stone. He's not in a statue. He's a living spirit. Yes, and, hallelujah, and, brother. And he doesn't have eyes. A statue, you know, you know what it says in the Psalms about, you know, these, these statues have eyes, they see not, you know, they have ears, they hear yes, not. Yes. And <laughs> I, I remember as a child growing up in Belfast, I was, you know, I thought I was following God and, and I know God understands I was trying to look, look for him. I know he, I know he does now that he saved me. And yes, yes, when yes. he rescued me from traditionalized religiosity, um, 
he showed me, first of all, that he was my heavenly father and that I didn't need to, to look at man as my father in a spiritual mm -hmm. sense. Yes. You know, I didn't need to go into a confession box. I had one mediator, yes, which was yes, Jesus Christ yes, himself. Yes. And that, thank God or Mary, that I was going to heaven. The, the day I accepted Christ as my savior. Yes, and no yes. more was I burdened by mm -hmm. this yes, yes, yes. bondage of trying to work out your own salvation with your own good works. Yes, yes. It's wow. by grace. It's by that, grace that are you so saved. Yes. Still, still so, so strong in the traditional yes, yes, historical yes, churches. Yes. I think, Stevie, yes, you yes. should really visit yesterday's blog. Um, I will put a link somewhere here available because you would really enjoy our historical account, how it actually yep. went down in history. Okay that how that religiousness came about and how the Sunday worship came about and how it is, how the worship, the attitude of worship has changed over, yeah. um, over time in history. I think. Um, Absolutely. And I appreciate I that. Very important for you to see that because you might, I have not gone into extensive details, but I will do that in various Saturdays. That's what I will okay. try to do on Saturdays in general, to go okay. into those topics. And on okay, listen. That fellowshipping. Okay, thank you so much. And, and I genuinely appreciate that, and I will pursue that. Um, I, I would just like to say, you know, guys, you're on fire, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, the all-consuming fire of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, you're on fire. And, yes. and long may that continue. And, Amen. you know, this is a blessing, as I said to you at the start of this conversation. Yes. Yes. You know, it, and and it, you it, are very welcome to come and join us every day, 2 o'clock Hawaiian time. This is where I live. I live in Hawaii, and that's where I started it from. So we're keeping to that timing. But every day you can chime in and fuck. Find me online if you follow me. Okay. Uh, obviously, my timeline is different from yourself living in the United Kingdom, but I will certainly follow you up on that. And I will, you know, as soon as this conversation is finished, I will tap in and connect with you. Uh, there is always recordings available, and I typed in the, the link for you in the chat box that, um, that is for yesterday. You will find it very educational. A lot of data okay. that is useful for you to understand why you had to go through in the Catholic Church the things that you felt you had been going through before you found Christ. Believe me, I know all about that. Amen. You know, God is my teacher. One of you is going to have to have you on a, on a Saturday to tell us yes. hey, exactly what the hey. answer is to that question. Listen, yes. listen to me. I received an unction from the Holy Spirit, and I need no man to teach me anything. Jesus, I'm hallelujah. guided by the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. So when God rescued me and my brother, and my brother's now a pastor, mm. what Christ said would happen to you. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people in the, across the world that are suffering a lot more than what I'm about to say to you, you know, with their own lives. They're, they're being killed. They're being martyred every day. Yes. And these are the last days. There's no doubt about that. What I'm saying is, <clears throat> when Christ said that even members of your own family will be your worst enemies because of me or because of my namesake, I know what that means firsthand. And irrespective of the fact that, you know, you can speak to people, uh, you can speak to your family members, you can speak to people, unless God intervenes spiritually to actually awaken them from their spiritual slumber and death, then all you can do is plant the word, plant the seed, and let God do the rest. Now, I know growing up in Belfast, which is a, a diverse community between Protestants and Catholics, and neither of those communities are, are correct. You know, you've got the, the Protestant community here in Northern Ireland who are stuck and stepped in their own traditions. Mm -hmm. You've got the Catholic community who are stepped in their own traditions. And there's very, very few genuine, real, born-again Christians in this land. But God is going to revive this land. 
he, he has already told me and other people that God is going to revive this land and he's going to use people like, like myself who were born up in the Catholic community to reach out to people because he's already, let, he, he, he already tried the Protestant community, community to do this and God, the day he saved me and he guided me, he said, Stephen, the revival will start with Catholics who are born again. Amen. And what church are you going to worship right now? I'm in a local church in Belfast. Lu and Lutheran? Did you say Lutheran? No, no, I'm in a local church local in church. Belfast. And is it, is, yes. it, um, is it Catholic? No. Or church of England? No. Uh, the, no, it's, it's, it's Pentecostal. It's, it's wow, <laughs> the, the, the island changed a lot lately. <laughs> yeah, right, right. What I'm trying to say is, God showed me when He called me out of mystery Babylon. Hmm. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. If you're in the if you're in the spirit of God, when God God showed me about idols, yes, Lord. He showed me about the whole falsehood of the Catholic Church. Hmm. Wow. He, he showed me how 80 million people were murdered under the Reformation. Hmm. 80 million people were murdered under the Protestant Reformation. Do you remember this? And God hasn't forgot about that. Yes. Lord. And God oh, knows Jesus. about how dare somebody call himself Holy Father when God Almighty is the only one reserved in history to be called that. Oh, yeah. How dare that person call himself Holy Father? That is the title alone given to God Almighty Himself. And how dare anybody so stand in the place here, right? of Jesus Christ? Yes, of course I am. Of course I am. I mean, the, 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 the apostolic unction of the New Testament is very, very definitive about this. The yeah. Apostle Paul, even Paul said, I suffer not a woman to teach, neither to usurp authority mm -hmm. over a man. So when you talk about women in the ministry or women usurping authority over man, I look at Joyce Mayer, for example, in the United States, mm -hmm. this celebrity Christian guru, and I hear what Apostle Paul says, and I don't care what comes out of her mouth. I'm sticking to the Bible. It's okay for her to speak to her own, you know, women, fellow believers, but who are these people to stand on stage and go against the word of God. It doesn't matter how famous they are, how much money they're making. This is the word of God here. And that's how true revival is actually yes. ultimately started. <clears throat> I would like to understand, are you, are you talking about women in the ministry that is not biblical? Or are you talking specifically about Joyce Meyer, Myers not being biblical? No, what I'm saying is, it's, it's, it's brilliant for women to testify for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's fantastic. The, the, the Bible is filled with women who stood up for Jesus Christ and were appointed by God. Yes. But what I am saying is, according to apostolic New Testament teaching, mm -hmm. that when a woman usurps authority in a corporate sense over the, word, over the church and stands there as an authority figure, then that has to be called into question. Particularly, you asked me, you, you said to me, are you part of the Church of England? Mm -hmm. I see women being put into the ministry. Mm -hmm. And I see the Apostle Paul down through history, through the, the New Testament scripture. Yes. And, and it's, it's, it's one of these things. Either you stick to the word of God, or you're going on your own interpretation of God's word. Well, I am I have discussed it on January 1st in my blog um it's exactly happened on Jan to be on january 1st because my i have been questioned too what am i doing here why am i running a ministry is it at all biblical the other hand i would like to say that the controversy it created in my church the Seventh day adventist church for over two years they have been discussing women uh, ordination and I have yeah. never, ever even got involved or made a single word yeah. of opinion. I refrain from that. First of all, I have no bigger knowledge than the Bible does. I cannot judge it. 
and I did not want it to get into the ego ba battle. But I have decided I'm not starting a new church. But yeah. I'm just going to make myself available to yes. say what I got, the Lord moves me to speak. And if women or men will flood my yeah. blog, it's their choice. If anybody has any issue with women in the ministry, then they really don't belong into this book. Yes, of course. And I understand what you're saying. That's that's my standpoint. But I am not an ordained minister. I feel yep. I am biased by the Holy Spirit. And what people for in act happened to them when they were baptized by the Holy Spirit is that the yes. top of fire has entered them and they were able to preach to all nations. Have you yes, that's correct. how huge that is that from over hundreds of countries, people can join in here and convert fellowship in English? To me, that is like healing Babylon. Amen. Amen. Yes. Healing the Tower of Babylon event. We yes. are here to, to heal that is broken. Yes. God had to humble human beings by confusing their languages. Mm -hmm. right. But now we are here, and out of humility, we can glorify the Lord. That's correct. I agree with that. Not that it is time to reach God and tower over him out of pride, but we are yeah. here yeah. to gather and commune. <laughs> And, and joined in one language of fellowship in order yes. to glorify the Lord. You know, um, if, if I could just say this really quick here. <clears throat> Excuse me. The awesome thing about God, because he is love, um, and it's important for us to rec recognize, as Stevie had said earlier, uh, just the order of God, and there is an order of God. And, and I think because of our own... Um, uh, uh, selfish reasons. Um, we, we we want to stand out on, in front sometimes. So I definitely appreciate Stevie uh, in his word. And, uh, and and I would just go on to say is that uh, because God is love um, and there is a different makeup between a man and a woman. It's not to say a woman can't be a scientist. It's not to say she can't be a pilot. It's not to say that she can't be, uh, she can't be the head of different departments in her job. But there, in fact, is an order. And when things, because the, the biggest issue, and I'm not sure if it's anywhere else, but a lot of times here, even in the States, the biggest issue or one of the bigger issues, many issues, amongst many issues, is that when a woman is make, when a woman makes more money than a man, okay, she makes more money and the man is not making as much. But that, in a sense, is a sense of the authority changing because a woman sees things differently. Yeah. And that's just how, how it is. And we, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure there's going to be lots of different arguments on that, but the reality of it is, is that that's how it's been made up. And it's God's love that, in fact, uh, one pastor said it uh, years ago, he said it best, that a woman desires love and a man desires respect. Yeah, and I thought it was just so awesome because when a woman is not given, when a woman is not given love, the man can't get respect. Yeah. So, so even in just, even in that that in the sense of uh, what Stevie was saying, how the church, how you've got all these women pastors coming up now nowadays, and I'm I'm not here to judge anyone, but the fact is that God is the church and God is a man. And the fact that when we take things out of order, it, yeah. it's a burden on a woman that she was not meant to carry. It doesn't matter how many degrees she might have or how much money that she might have. The yeah. woman is there, the woman is there uh, again, going back to what uh, Maya was saying earlier in regards to what we were talking about the Martha. It doesn't mean that that the woman's duties or in serving are, are to to be ignored, absolutely not. And a lot of in this country nowadays, we're dealing with uh, 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 the the, uh, the women power, women power. I'm, I am woman. Hear me roar, hear me roar, and all that kind of concept. But 
I didn't grow up like that. I grew up with a, a mother who I loved dearly and absolutely respected. So when I don't see a woman less than me, yeah. So it's hard for me to relate to to that idea that women are, you know, to see that women are less than because I, I don't think that way. Me personally, yeah. I don't think that way because I had a mother who would just go to the ends of the earth for her family. Yeah. And so yeah. it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that. And, and you see such a huge competition, if you will. And, and that's exactly what it is. And that's and that's what happens when Satan has switched the order. Yeah. You you find we, 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 we the enemy comes in. And the woman now yeah. thinks that she's better than the man and. She's saying, and again, the Bible even talks about the Bible even talks about men become becoming lovers of themselves. Yeah, and it's not just men; it's the human race becoming lovers yeah. of themselves because yeah. they have usurped the authority, God's authority, His original plan. Yeah. And again, it doesn't take away the fact that I mean, I absolutely love women. I think women are awesome, and I think a lot of times women they don't own, they don't recognize their own strength. Yeah. They recognize their own power because they're so busy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They're so busy. My mother would say to me when I was a young person, she would say, um, Curtis, you're so busy leaning. We're, meaning that meaning that I, I, I was not recognizing the space that I was in because I wanted what was in front of me. Yeah. I wanted I wanted what was going to happen next week. Yeah rather than recognizing the place where I was at. And I think so often we, we, we find nowadays that that's a people thing, but the changing of guard, if you will, there there's not, God hasn't changed his mind, first of all, but there has been a changing of the guard because the enemy has come in and flipped yeah. the script. And yes. because he's flipped the script, guess what? The men are going crazy. The women are going crazy because now the man wants to, now, now God wants to do a different thing. He's trying to flip it back to where it's supposed to be. And yeah. now the man has to fight for his authority because the woman thinks that she needs to be there. Yeah. So it was made for her. So go ahead, Maya. Uh, the way I see it is that after all, <laughs> <laughs> after all, Pastoral, Loving this. Amen, pastoral amen. training is very necessary, but Absolutely. pastoral role and priestly role has become a job. A yep. job. They train you, they place you, and for the rest of your life, you have a job. Yeah. I see it that when Jesus told the disciples to go out, first time he told them to go take with them a stuff, a cloak. Yes. Right. And no purse. And the second time he told them to go out, he 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 knew that he was going to die within a few days, and he told them to take with them a cloak, a stuff, sandals, and the purse. They had one. Yeah. It, it very clearly tells you that when you're on a mission. You gotta be like an entrepreneur. This is what is the whole Amen. place. Well said. Well said. If you did not work for your daily bread, you don't get to eat. And right, right. Today, I say that that's how it should be for them. But the pastors and priests are not anymore entrepreneurs. Therefore, they cannot really be disciples. They are put into their chairs and they take on a job. Amen. Well said. Well said, Maya. And well when said. I am Two reasons I have to want to take the priestly or pastoral job. One is because I don't want to work in a job and be complacent about my position. Second, because yeah. I am an entrepreneur and I'm a woman who in the Bible being instructed to have a refer reverence for my men. I don't have a man, so to say, at the moment. But if I had one, I Jesus, yeah. my husband right now, and he's the head above my head. Yeah. And I, I, I just want to, I just want to, hey there, um, 
Uh, Hi. 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 Hello. Let's see what Curtis has to say. The voices are all blending together a little bit. I don't really hear anybody. So let's let's see um, Curtis to finish what he has been saying, and then we let other other subjects come in. Sure. I, I just want to read the scripture this scripture really quick, and just in relation to what, what Maya just mentioned, um, it's Matthew ten and sixteen, and in regards to how Jesus had prepared his uh, disciples to go out with purse, cloak, and uh, in any event, it says, "Behold, I send you forth as sheep." In the midst of wolves, be ye therefore wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. Yeah. So, Amen. Praise God. That's all I, I wanted to read. So, yeah. Um, I just came hopped in because um, I was speaking to Maya. Uh, was it last week? And uh, I found that what Maya had to say was was exactly what I actually believed in, and what I did the research on about um, true Christianity. Um, one of the things that I, um, as a believer that uh, Jesus exists and was a Jew, um, I believe that for you to truly understand Christianity, you need yep. to first find out who Jesus was from the beginning. Okay. How, how he was born, yep. um, what religion he was practicing, what he ate, the food he ate, what books he was reading, and what I find for me, when the, one of the things that I, I only realized that a few days ago, that Jesus was actually circumcised. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Jesus was a Jew, a real Jew. He was born yes. a Jew. Yes. And, 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 and so with the, all the prophets in the Bible, they were Jews. They were born Jewish. Yes. They were all circumcised. So for me as a believer in, and, and a follower, if I'm going to follow Jesus, I have to be circumcised. I have to follow what he followed. <laughs> well, but but also, that's not what the New Testament is. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 so no, I'm not talking about the New Testament. I'm saying to you, if you are a follower of Jesus, you have to follow what he did. So you have to do what he did. So I don't believe in Christianity at all. Okay. I, I don't at all believe in any form of Christianity. I believe okay. in what what Jesus was born. That's what I believe. <laughs> That's the most important thing for me as a believer in him. He was born a Jew. He practiced Judaism. And that's what yeah. I believe. I'd like to say a few words here to introduce Fancy, Fancy Dog here. He... <laughs> but no, 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 no. no. This is he this. For his own safety respect. Um, he's from a Middle Eastern country. Torah keeping um, brother who did, who is not a messianic Jew but he keeps to the Jewish traditions and in this place here even though we have a very open minded open door policy about different inputs I would like us yeah. to respect that that is the case and I understand where Fancy Dog is coming from he yeah. in his country this is very unusual that somebody would be thinking this way and would even reach out to Christians to have a conversation of like this. Yeah, fantastic. And what we have done last week, Fancy Dog, was so enormous. For days I could not take it out of my mind because you have taken me to places to explore the meaning, what, what we do with our hands and our art. It was a true treat it was very important for me and what i really would have liked to have you on this uh show for right now up on air is to ask where did your thinking and meditations taking you after you, we we have discussed the purpose of your art yeah that i'm still thinking about it and it's very difficult to come to the conclusion of if my art is going to bring people closer to God and I'm still wrestling with that because it's so pro so deep to uh, a question like and the more I answer the question the more it's telling me not to paint images of faces okay so I would like to bring you something that I realized since we last spoke and it, it is very important for you because the first thing I would have done also my first thoughts okay then i'm going to stop doing art 
because it's all blasphemy. That was my first thought. And I was thinking I realized that. that to take people closer to God and to the biblical words of the people, we need to depict the biblical stories, parables, and themes. As soon as you start painting something that expresses, for example, the baptism of Jesus or circumcision, you just talk about circumcision. If that's what, what is on your mind now, paint the circumcision of Jesus or any human being. And that will give people an experience of being closer to God. Well, for me, the idea of keeping the work kosher was that I was inspired through Jesus' ancestors, what work they did. So if you look at um, ancient Juda Judaism culture, they, used, they did do a lot of creative things, art, they painted, they did calligraphy, um, they did like designs, they, they used to um, decorate the, the temple inside their temple and they, there was a lot of the dresses that they wore for the women, um, their designers, they had fashion, they had earrings, that, um, and all of these things were... According to God's instruction, yeah. as Moses has described it for them, but that, that, that material is not lost, it's available for you too. Yeah. God's instruction is written down in your Torah. There is no reason why you cannot paint the temple as you imagine or paint the sacrifice is being taken to temple and sacrificed mm -hmm. on the Excellent. altar. Excellent. You can hey, yeah, so, paint you, you, you paint people, right? Um, I paint faces and I yeah. paint abstract work. Yeah, yeah please look, please look. The Lord's telling me to tell you that you are to continue painting people and it's in their eyes. There's something that you do in your painting with the eyes of the people. Mm. And I, I've never, I promise you, I've never seen your, I've never seen your work. I've really? never seen your work. I've seen you a couple of times in black, but I have something. I'll show you one well, thing. Well, no, no, no. Hang on. Let me, let me, he let me, covered let me, up his art. Take it away. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Hang on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Please, Lord, the Lord is telling me to tell you, brother, is that you are to continue painting people, but it's something that he's allowed you to see through the hearts of people. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord's allowed you to see through the hearts of people. So when you paint, it's the eyes that will draw the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'll, I'll show you something because I was about to cover the face. So can I just show you something? Yes, yes, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm having trouble with this because it's it's very heavy for me because Maya, um, she she hit me very hard with that question hmm. and I, I'm, I'm actually so. wrestling with it and I don't have an actual answer for her. So I just came but to you, tell you, her that. You just got your answer. Okay, yes. okay. Yes. Um, I'm, I I'll just show you. I was not giving him a feedback on his painting, but I wanted <laughs> yeah, him to know is his art bringing people closer to God. Yeah, that's and, and that's what's going. Closer. That's what's going to praise Lord. That's what's going to bring them closer to God. It's through their eyes. Look Amen. At Lord. That. Look at that. See, it, it's through the eyes. And, and that's what exactly what Fancy Dog wanted from me last week. Yes, Maya, Lord. is these eyes kosher? It's and the eyes. And, and I, I promise you, I, I wasn't even at that conversation. I don't even know what you guys discussed. I know you weren't because it was only the two of us. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, it, it's the eyes, man. And, and God, the Lord wants you to the Lord wants you to 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 perfect that. That's what you're to perfect. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And that's what's yeah. going to draw draw people closer to God. And we that's the next fancy dog. Praise the Lord. So are you saying that this guy is the Roy Oberson of art? Pardon? Uh, those shades I, on right now? Do you remember I, Roy Oberson? Yeah, I, I know who I know who he is, but I, I I wouldn't go that far. But I'm just saying that in regards to <laughs> uh, clear. Well, I didn't hear the question. What was that? Fancy dog. First of all, hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> hello, Stevie. Sorry, I didn't uh, get the chance to introduce myself uh, correctly to you. It just I just jumped in passionately and started talking. Okay. Sorry about that. It's okay. It's okay. I, this is fantastic. You know, this is this is very intimate. As I was saying at the start of this conversation, it's a blessing that we, we can communicate like this across the world. 
It's absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Like 10 yeah. years ago, this wouldn't have been available to us. Look at us now yes. taking this technology for granted. It's absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. No, we are praising blood. Clear. Yeah. They are the best people in the world. What I'm saying is, those shades that you're wearing, you look like Roy Orbison, sir. Oh, amen. <laughs> uh, I love him. Hey, I like him. So I love I. him. He's, so do I. I. I just love that guy. It's amazing that you mentioned him. I, I, where's his music? I miss it. Who is, who is it? Whose music are you talking about? A guy called Roy Orbison, who was, uh, you know, uh, they were saying that, you know, he, he had a nicer voice than Elvis Presley, but he didn't have the face. <laughs> Uh, well, but I can, I can, I can look for it. Wait, I can look while we talk. I'll look for it. Now, I would like us to pause for here for a moment because of the topic. Okay. And I would like to express my gratitude what the Holy Spirit is doing here. Yes. Lord, because yes. our subject today and every Sunday is biblical rest, and we yeah. talked about the renewal of the mind every day, and here now in 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 um fellowship it's the renewal of the spirit this communion is the true biblical rest we could Amen. earlier yes. intellectually discuss it and we looked into the bible for answers but i would like yeah. us to become aware of what is actually happening here Amen. Amen. is that we are in a much higher level we we are we are yep. living it, brothers. We are living the biblical rest, the communion, yes, renewal yes, yes. of the spirit in actuality. Yeah. And I, I want to tell you, you opened up my heart so much right now. I'm so full of love. This, yes. is, this is what Amen I'm that. for. Yeah, you are, you're, doing a, you're doing wonderful work. Uh, I must say, you're reaching Absolutely. out to a lot of people. Um, it's amazing how you talk and, and how you comfort people, yes. um, especially when they're confused. And you give a lot of good advice. And I've never heard a, a female or woman talk the way you talk. Uh, that is my first. That's why I, I came back today, because uh, your, your words that you spoke last week was very powerful and I could not believe that I was hearing it from your you you a, a woman saying that to me. I I felt like wow, you you know you spoke better than a man. You know, well, thank and you very I, much. I, I yeah, just discussed yeah, it yeah, earlier. It, men versus man in ministry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You uh, uh, <laughs> can have the answer. Yeah, because you, you sounded very strong. So I was like, wow, yes, I, yes. this is very inspirational. Um, I was motivated. Um, I, I, to to think deeper about what what do I believe in, and um, you gave me more confidence actually, and um, I, I I I thank you for that. Can, can I can I say something? Uh, you know, on 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 continuance of what you were saying earlier on. Now you say you're you're, you're designated as Fancy Dog Wings, but what is it, your actual name? My name is Stephen, by the way. Um, what is um, your I Oh, oh, we could maybe appear in uh, appear dot in. It's a private room. Yes. We could have a, a if you uh, in future. okay. So, so this is your call sign, fancy dog. Because the yes. oh, I'll explain the reason why I choose to protect my name on Blab is because okay. Blab is still in. Wait, I just mean uh, Blab is still in beta, uh, Stephen, Stevie, yes. and there's a lot of unkosher characters that's on this. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <they're>, okay. <laughs> And, and <laughs> yeah, they, they hack, okay. They, they 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 hack into your accounts. They do lots of things that is not good for your your image. Um, I get you now. Bring, Sorry. They yeah. take photos of your face. They put it on other websites, and they yeah. put make clown around with your face or image, your name. Um, they they label me, or I've been already labeled as a terrorist. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry for laughing at that. Yeah, yeah I know, and that's I not sometimes free, obviously. That, yeah, it's not true. And I go on to some of the blabs and people are already calling me, you Muslim bastard. Sorry for the word, but I'm getting discriminated already yes. without people okay. knowing who I am. Okay, sir. You know? I, I, I appreciate that. So I'm, I'm so, yeah. I, I, okay, so fancy dog wings, I'll refer to you as FTW, okay? So the bottom Any, line is... It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> fancy, even if you want to call me fancy, it's cool. Uh, I'll give you, I'm South African. I'm, I'm, I'm South African Excellent. Indian. I'm, yes. a, I'm an Indian, 
So excellent. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have I have Muslim family. I have Christian family. Um, South Africa is multicultural, so yeah. I understand uh, both cultures and uh, I yeah. appreciate it. I don't discriminate against it. But what do I. for me, what I I feel is so uh, unfair is you find Christians discriminate yeah. other people, and as a Christian, this is a sin. You cannot judge people like that. We love you. No, you I, I agree with that. I agree with that. There's only one choice. Also, you're chasing them away from, from your, your faith. You're chasing yeah. people away. Let, hey, only one judge. Let, let, let There's Stevie, only one judge. Make his point. Go ahead, Stevie. Um, what I was trying to say, sir, first of all, I have visited India. I spent five weeks in Punjab, in Amritsar, and I love it. And I visited a lot of people, uh, different types of faith, and I got a very good understanding about the... the you know, the, the whole multi-faith culture in India. And it was fantastic. And more importantly, I love the food. Yes. The food was absolutely beautiful, right? Yes. Now, <laughs> the point being, in continuance to what you were saying earlier on about being an artist, right? Yes. Uh, that whole argument about, you know, what you were saying, May, about, you know, that trap, <coughs> whether it's, there's a dichotomy about if you portray art, in a religious way, is that misconstrued as a form of idolatry, etc.? Is that, is, that is, is my interpretation yes, yes, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Can, can I just say something? I, from my understanding of, of, of the Old Testament, right? From my understanding, now this is open to debate. There's nothing wrong with being an artist and expressing your talent that God's given you yeah. at all. Yeah. I think that I think the situation is in God's economy is when people started worshiping yes. those images as a method to actually reach God. I think that's oh. where God had the problem. Oh. Yes, when, right. when these particular images were trying to reach God, like I came from a Roman Catholic background, as I said earlier on, before you come on, yeah. and I grew up in statues and stuff like that, and you know, worshiping, you know kneeling down before a statue, lighting a candle, praying to this statue, thinking that I was getting a direct line to heaven above through these particular images. But when I realized and when I was delivered from that form of idolatry that God showed me, to back, to, back to the Old Testament, never mind the New Testament, as what you said to me earlier on, you said, you know, I don't believe in the Christianity thing. Let's go back to the Old Testament. The Mosaic law is mm. you shall not worship any graven image of anything in heaven or on earth or under the sea. So what that means mm -hmm. in essence from my interpretation is when you start worshiping these images as God or as a method to get to God, then you're in breach of the law of God and God's will for your mm -hmm. life because mm -hmm. God is a spirit. He does not dwell in anything made by human hands. And my name is Stephen. The first Christian martyr after Christ was Stephen, and he was stoned to death for telling the truth. And he reminded the Jews about all the Jews were sent these prophets, and they were all killed for telling the truth. And he was stoned to death for telling the exact truth. They, they, they turned on him for him telling them their own history. They didn't want to be reminded of the truth. And not only is that the case in modern Christianity, when you remind Christians that you, they've, they've actually fallen into idolatry, they're the first ones to turn on you. These, these yeah. wayward Christians, by the way, are the ones yeah. who are not actually delivered by God to see this, what you're saying. So yeah. By all yeah. means. Yeah, what you're saying. Follow your talent. What you're saying is, yeah, what you're saying is very powerful. It's so true. None of your words is, 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 is wrong. I believe I experienced some of what you said even. And, um, you know, it's, uh, that was like, it was awesome just to hear you say that, and you've encouraged me to continue with what I'm doing. Absolutely, and you've made me realize some. You've made me realize something, and I, and and I, okay, I see fancy that what you're is true. You, you disappeared. Know, uh, I still see him. What? Your Can... picture and voice and audio is old. We can't hear you. You're what? still here. Oh. I can hear you, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but Stevie, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to take your advice. It was like a real pastor was talking to me right now. And 
um it i, I was receiving real advice i'm gonna i'm gonna i believe absolutely you sir said. absolutely Aiming you've got that. a brilliant talent there i can see your art behind you that's fantastic um and, and what yeah. sorry see see your name at the top sir the host yeah you're under b r w n b curtis oh, uh, sorry curtis. what curtis, Cur- curtis. sent to you is totally yeah. true you know about the eyes the eyes are the window to the soul I mean, God talks about this in the Bible. Yeah, absolutely. That these are a light to absolutely, the soul. Absolutely, brother. God says that. Absolutely, brother. God. Yes. Yeah. And that was, yeah. And yeah. you're in the right direction. Yes, Lord. And God has blessed you with that talent. And he has, sir. And, and God bless you for it. No, I, 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 no I've, I, feel that, I feel that I'm in a church now or a temple and I'm getting a valuable advice from God directly. So, yeah, I thank you yeah. for that, Stevie. I'll be praying uh, for you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, no, thank you. I, I, mm. I need all the prayer and I, I, I pray for all of you as well. You, all of you are good people and um, you're doing good works. Um, um, you're encouraging people to get back to believing in, in the faith. Um, you're not chasing anybody away. I, I really appreciate it. And I think a lot of people will benefit from it. Yes, your, I would you. like to say here when we talk mm. about in general about Christians, um, it, it's, it's it maybe sometimes be careful about not to overboard this is what i see in entrepreneurship we call it <coughs> finding your tribe there is such a yeah. wide variety of christianity out there today and if we want to be carefully trotting on yeah. on on keeping the peace in the world and being peacemakers then we really want to recognize that we all need to find our own tribe and it's might not going to be in our local churches or the people who are most obvious yeah. you can be looking up yeah. certain people sure, for possibly. years and then at some point something happens and you will need to change we always just as entrepreneurs or disciples have to find our tribe and connect continue to nurture others and feed ourselves we are responsible to be connected to people with yeah. the holy spirit wants us to commune with yeah but so what church are you stevie with what, what uh do you okay know? so as i was saying earlier on before you come on uh this this particular site yeah i was originally brought up a roman catholic in Belfast in Northern Ireland, yeah? I was brought, I was yeah, yeah. You know, reared in that particular uh, <coughs> religion. And the word religion, I'm not trying to preach, I'm just telling you what the word religion means. It comes from the Greek... No, no, you, you say whatever you want to okay, say, sir. Stevie. It's cool. I just, I just don't want to offend. I'm, 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 I'm speaking out of love. I don't want to be, you know, create any disharmony. I'm just trying to tell you that... No, we cool, um, yes. we cool Stevie. Say what you want to say. We, we understand. People say that they are religious, right? But when I ask people, do you actually know what the word religious means? <laughs> Please don't. And they say, yeah, um, yeah. no. So why do you say that you're religious when you don't even understand what the word means? The, yeah. the, the word religious is from the Greek word religios, which means to bind a person's mind. So when they tell me they are religious, it means they're under mental captivity. <laughs> they are in bondage. Yeah, I'm yeah, religious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so religious. Captivity. Captive. Yes. So... Yeah, when you're people right. say to me, you're right. You're right. I am so right. religious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you yes. really are. You're a slave to a man-made tradition. Of course you're religious. No, but wait, 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 wait. That's why it, wait, uh, in, in, for the Orthodox Jews, they have to tie this band around their arm. They yes. they, they make a vow. They are tied. It's true. What you're saying is actually uh, part of their, their religious belief. They are tied to the covenant and God they wear. The, 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 the thing on top of the skull yes, from cap, what I understand, um, the tafir- from what I understand, these guys are doing it out of, out of what they believe to be the truth. Yeah, uh, yeah, but like what you said is true. I mean, they are enslaved to that faith of yeah. theirs, they, they take it as that's their sacrifice. We uh want to be that slave, so but if you're talking from, from just people yeah. in general, then yeah, you're so, right. so in answer to your question, sorry. Uh, I was brought up in a Roman Catholic religion, to get back to that word religion, 
And yeah. when I, I was searching, I, I, I read so many different types of things when I was in my 20s. I used to run for Northern Ireland. I used to be a, a champion runner. I used to be a champion athlete. Okay. Uh, and as much as, you know, I was winning races, etc., it wasn't making me very happy. And I was on the precipice of being world class. My brother was world class in triathlon. He was six times Irish champion. And the guy was a, a machine. You know, he, he was fourth in the world championships. It's not about bravado, what I'm saying. It's about uh, the application of what I'm about to say. N neither of us were happy. You know, we <laughs> neither, we, we, our mum, in, 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 in furtherance of what you said earlier on, Curtis, about your mother. My mum was a one parent and I have total respect for yeah. women. My mother looked sure. after us. My mother worked on markets. We were very, very poor. And my mother nurtured us and she gave us mm -hmm. everything. She bent over backwards sure. to help us to become something of our lives. So we were just trying to honor my mum. My poor dad, I'm not gonna go into that, but you know, we forgive him eventually. The poor guy had a problem, you know, a, a drinking problem and he, and he took it out my mum and ultimately it, end, it ended in divorce. And in, 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 the, in the Roman Catholic religion, that was frowned upon back then. You know, mm. how dare you get divorced? You're not allowed to get divorced. But without, I'm not going to cast up my, my father's sins because God says not to do that. So go back to the whole thing about not being judgmental. Who am I to judge anybody? I've already forgiven my father. He's forgiven me. So mm. forget about that. I love the guy. I forgive him. And that was part of my deliverance. Yeah. So... If God hadn't have intervened in my life, I wouldn't have been as forgiving towards my father. And, and neither would have my, my brother. The first thing God did when he came into our lives is he gave us peace, first of all. He gave us an inner peace to forgive people, starting with our own father. And all we do now yeah. is try and help other people. And in answer to, yeah, in answer to your right. question, that whole thing, I was brought up a Roman Catholic and it was, a, in my estimation anyway, the, re the rest of my family outside my mother, or sorry, outside my brother and I, are still there. You have to love them. You can't Bible bash them. You just have to love them. You can't, you can't force them to see what you're seeing. Um, and as we were saying earlier on, when, you know, when Curtis and I and, and Maya were having this conversation, even members of your own family will be your worst foes when you take a stand mm -hmm. for God. And I'm talking about the yeah. Lord God Almighty, the, 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 the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <coughs> the, 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 yeah, your, your, your words are powerful. The, 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 the bottom line is, uh, I believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I believe mm -hmm. they are still prevalent in this day and age. And I believe even now as I'm speaking, God's putting the words in my mouth to speak to you. I don't even have to think about it. Yeah. There's one yeah, time, yeah, the, I, only, I, I, the only time that I'm confident in my life is when I'm speaking about God. When I try and yeah. go on my own strength, yeah. I, I'm like a yeah. stuttering fool. As soon as I start glorifying yeah. God, the fire inside me just puts the words in my mouth. It's absolutely amazing because it's love. Yes, God. It's always about helping other people mm -hmm. and sharing God's love. And I know. Yeah, but that's what you said that word peace, that God is here to give us. Yeah. Peace. And as Christians, we yes. have to. So unique about uh, the true Christianity is that. The difference between Judaism and Christianity is that Christi Christians promote peace and love and sharing and, and, and unity. And some of the Jews, they, they are still fighting wars. And, um, you know, they, they, they're doing like a lot of criminal um, things against other people, you know. But you find that Christians are still insisting, please, we need peace. And, and you know, God is here to, to, to de deliver peace. And that's more important than any other rules that, that you guys are following. And I heard that coming out of you and what you're saying, uh, your forgiveness, forgive your father, forgive people, do not be judgmental on people, accept them for their weaknesses, they're human beings. 
Yes. And all of those things you were saying was 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 very powerful and 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 you know that's I think when I look at Christianity that's something that I can easily uh, accept any day of, of, of the week. Thank you so much, yeah. Fancy Dog. Well, can I can I just yes, read the scripture first. here really quick? This is yeah. This is Amen. Praise the Lord. This is first first John and four and verse eleven and twelve. It says, Beloved, if God so loved if God so loved us, we ought also love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God will dwell in us. And if and his love is perfected in us. So I I, I read that scripture because that's the very thing that Jesus was doing. He he was born in love, he started off in love. And he ended in love. And so even as Christians, uh, I, I know that at times uh, things that other Christians will do will be just very nerving to us. Uh, it's irritating. We don't like the way they do things. But we are, remember, we are to remind ourselves that God says that with love and kindness have I yeah. drawn thee. Praise the Lord. So we are to remember that even as Christians, because other Christians will get on our nerves in regards yeah. to how they do things and what they say, because they're not necessarily the kindest yeah. of people. But we are responsible for carrying the torch of love, just like Jesus did from the beginning to the end. We may be we may be uh, abused uh, uh, verbally. Uh, we may be spat upon the same things that Jesus did, because, again, he started off in love. He ended in love. And so we are to remind ourselves is that the word of God says to with love and kindness, have I drawn thee? So for those same Christians that we don't like, we have to be reminded that we are carrying God's Absolutely. for love. Yeah, love, love is the power. Love is the power. Hate yes. is the weakness. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we, we could go into great depth here. I could go into the whole thing about false flag terrorism across the United States. I could go into the whole thing about what happened September 11th. I don't want to go there. Um, I can go there. I don't want to. But regarding the Jews, I love Jews. I mean, God's word is very clear about this in the New Testament. There's going to come a time when God is going to stop speaking to the nations, the Gentile nations. Absolutely. And he's not going to save another single Gentile from those nations. And then he's going to turn his attention mm. towards Israel. And at that time, and we are living in right now and we're on the mm. precipice of it right now all, all you have to do is look around the world right now and the nations that are involved in this end time saga syria iran yes iraq egypt russia china afghanistan kazakhstan all those nations all those satellite nations these are end <coughs> nations that god talked about and we are on the precipice of unfortunately nuclear armageddon it's going to happen. God said that this was going to happen. The next way God's going to destroy this earth was with fire. He said in the book of Revelations, I have, to, I have come to destroy those who have destroyed the world. So this world is going to be destroyed. And it's going to be destroyed by the weapons of mass destruction, unfortunately. But as, 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 as believers, as disciples of God, we are not going to succumb to the weapons of mass destruction. Which what you talked about. Yeah. Yes, but but the thing is that that's just a warning. Just, that's a warning that he's given us. He says we can save ourselves from that. Of course. Um, and then, and there is a there's a sign uh, that says talks about Noah. And yes. The ark. Yes. And the, the covenant is the ark, or the second ark, uh, or the first ark is the covenant, and the second. Ark of Noah. So that's a sign that human beings can be saved if they want to, if they make an absolutely. effort to. We absolutely, can. absolutely. So we have to encourage people to come back to peace and to yes. love each other again. We have to stop the hate. We have to stop labeling people as terrorists. We have to resolve the issues that we have with each other. We have to accept the fact that we are all human beings. Yep. We have to come back to that. I, I, I don't, uh, I don't um, isolate people in nations I just look at the governments controlling those nations and it's yeah. very it's very biblically clear 
the Apostle Paul said this, that spiritual wickedness <coughs> is in high places. Yes, absolutely. And you only have to look at what the way governments are behaving, and it's yes, greed-based. Yeah. And, and James talked about this. The wars are started with greed. Yeah, look and, but what's the happening. Is the, the, when Jesus came, he came to stop all the wars. He came to stop the discrimination. He came to unite the people of all different races, of all yeah. different beliefs. He came to unite the people as human beings. For but them, to but unless people change, and see, here, here's the thing really quick. Praise the Lord. Unless people, because the word, the word of God, the word is alive. It is a spirit. It is alive. But unless people change their language, which mm -hmm. their language begins to glorify God, God is coming back. God is coming after his word. The words yeah. that we are speaking even right now are glorifying God. So Amen. if we glorify him, we will also be glorified, the Bible says. Amen to that. Yes, so, and that is only how we're going to be glorified. The only glory of man, the only glory of man is the glory he gives to God. Absolutely, absolutely. Praise the Lord. And so outside of that, outside of that is that we have not given God the glory. So yes, anything but, that we haven't, hang on a second, that's oh. uh, fancy. Even anything that does not give God the glory, it set itself on a path of destruction. Mm. Now, the Bible says, explain how you give that glory, right? There is certain things that you have to do to be able to give God that glory. You can't just glorify him in no, any No, no, absolutely, absolutely not. But, but, but let, me, let, me, let me let you in on this here. Praise the Lord. The way that you give God the glory, you've got to be pressed. How, who, thank you, Jesus. You have to be pressed like we all do. We have to be pressed. When Jesus, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, it was a place of yeah. pressing, the Bible says. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Because now Jesus is in a place where he has to drink of the cup which he has preached. Which, which he has ministered to people. He has to drink. He, his humanity has come forth now. He's like, a, I mean, it's, it's been there, but now we see a man. We see a human being yeah. like ourselves, a flesh and blood. He has to take upon the, he has to take upon the desires of his father. And that his father said, I started you in love. And you will end with love, regardless of how difficult it may be, regardless of how much you have gone through. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Regardless of the pressure and the ills of this society, regardless of the... But that's what everybody's doing. Well, 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 I mean, I, 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 I get that fancy dog, but for us as Christians, for us as Christians, we are even to still love them with the love of God. We may have to go back and go to the Father. Because even us as Christians. But why do we have to always hold on to the word Christians? Why can we because, not because, continue? Because Jesus. Why do we always hold on Jesus to this calls, word as Jesus called? calls us Christians? No, he didn't he did call not. us that. Okay, okay. Okay, where, where, okay, where did he call? Oh, and, I, and if I, I stand correct, I stand correct. He never, he never he called, called anybody he call, Christian. He called us, what did he call us? He didn't call us, he just said believers. Okay, believers. okay he, call, he calls us believers. He never said the, the Romans. Said that that's it was Christian. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. They, and I, and I, I stand, they changed. I stand, I stand they changed the original okay. um, uh, okay. church's uh, base. Okay. The, the the foundation of of the church. They changed okay. it to suit Roman Catholicism. Okay. Catholicism is was the dominant. Uh, uh, yeah. Christian. That's right. And I, and I, yeah. And I can see that fancy dog. That's exactly what I am all about. If you look at some of my materials, okay. it's very, very, very important. Jesus didn't even call them his followers. They okay. called themselves his believers. disciples. Believers. What he said to yeah. them, this is, this is so up to tell. It's not out of the Bible, but this is so true. Mm -hmm. That the devil knows your name and calls you by your sin. Why yes, God yes. knows your sin and calls you by your name. By your name, amen. And amen. Jesus called every single one of them by name. At the last, yes, but yes. after his uh, he after his resurrection, he yeah. was it after or before he sits with Peter eating eating fish and asks yeah. him three times, "Do you love me, Peter?" Yeah. 
and be yes, 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 I love you. Yes. Ask him yes. time, do you love me, Peter? And he's been, yes, yes, I told you, Lord, already I love you. And the third <laughs> yes, yes. time, Absolutely. Said, do you love me? Feed my sheep. That's why, yeah. that's why also, that's why all, yeah, but that's why also, that's why, I, can I just say something? That's why when, when Jesus was preaching, he always preached in the temple. He, I'm sorry, what was that fancy dog? When Jesus gave his sermons, a lot of the times he gave his sermons in a, at yeah. the temple. Yeah, the that's true. He was teaching on the Sabbath. And when he, and, and a lot of the times when he prayed, he, he prayed in the synagogue. When he came out of there, he went into the to do his service to 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 people, to to perform his uh, beliefs, to serve mankind, to mm-hmm. heal the world. He first went into the synagogue, then went out, and he went to go heal the people. So he first goes and get his blessing. He goes and talks about the pure things, yeah. the spiritual things. Then he comes out and goes and heal the people like a doctor. So right here now on Blab, uh, Stevie was using the toilet, and we were talking about Jesus. That was disrespectful. I was using the sink. <laughs> so, hey, what? The, the sink. What were you doing? I was filling the kettle. Well, nobody would have known that. We heard water that sounded like urine. No, and that, that's what... No, no, I'm boiling the kettle for the next coffee. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but that's what it sounded like. So what I'm saying is people get confused. People, I muted you. Oh, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show you the coffee in a couple of seconds. No, 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 no. no, no. I, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Let, let's okay. just let's just stay focused, guys. And, and just making a point that let's just stay focused. Yeah. People get confused. People get confused when they're in the wrong environment. Okay. You, okay. you need. I said you need to when you're talking about God and law and spiritual things. You need a proper fellowship. You need to be in the correct. Uh, environment you need yeah. to focus on what you're talking about you cannot be drunk you cannot be uh, uh thinking about uh fornication while you're talking about god there are certain things if you say you're glorifying god you need to be in the proper place and and you need to be with the, the right people you cannot yeah. be with, with people yes can, can i just say something here about what you were mentioning about peter maya yes maya. What I was yeah. trying to say yeah. there is what that I was Jesus trying to say that. Oh, can yeah. I, can I, I just say something? I wasn't finished yet, but just go ahead and you, you insert yourself. <laughs> wait, wait, this is, this wait. is all love, guys. This is uh, awesome. Uh, uh, of course, it's all love. Of course. And I, yeah. it's, 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 guys, I am so humbled. I'll be crying at the back end of this when I go to bed tonight. This is awesome. You know, yeah. man. It's, it's amazing. It's genuinely a privilege. Honestly, it's, it's just amazing. Now, yes, w- yes, whether yes, I meet yes. you guys again after that, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll be praying for you guys anyway, because hopefully someday we'll meet again. In, a, will. in a different dimension. Yes. In Amen. a different dimension, right? Yes, yes. Now, and, and yes. Hopefully in heaven. This is heaven. Yes, amen. But no, God dwells in heaven. That's and he's coming here right now. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes, I have. Yes, Do you remember yes, what we yes, said yes. earlier on? We're seated in heavenly places. <coughs> That's our yes. souls. I'm talking Hallelujah. about physical resurrection here. I'm talking about, yes. the, but what I'm saying is earlier on, Maya, you talked about Jesus had asked <laughs> Peter. Uh, well, sorry, who, who was it said about Peter? Wasn't, wasn't yourself? Yes. That, you know, sorry? Uh, Jesus, I, uh, Jesus had actually said yes, to Peter, Do you love me? Harassing him, yeah. but yeah. ask him yeah. three yeah. times because. Peter denied yeah, Jesus right. three times I... before the crow crowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he yeah, had, yeah. he had yeah, 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 he, he okay. accomplished <laughs> the same relationship they had before yes, the crucifixion. Yes, but what I have tried yes, to go there is that Jesus <laughs> establishing, he calls him by love and asks him to feed the sheep, serve the sheep. <laughs> by service so when we were discussing the title christians that was nothing that jesus used yeah, he said to his disciples yeah. go and l- l- give each other the same love i have given you because that's how you will be recognized about by the love for one and mm-hmm. other there is no yes, 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 yes. and also jesus his name Sorry, can I just finish my point? Can I just finish my point? 
<laughs> Go ahead, Stevie. Are you aware that Jesus Christ asked Petros or Cephas that question in three different wow, languages? Wow, that's new to me. I know it from the Hebrew, the Greek, and that is all Greek. <laughs> okay, so the first thing he said to Petras, which wow. is the splinter of the rock, <laughs> you yeah. are Cephas. Yes, yes. You are not the rock. Even Peter himself said that in the Petrine epistles. I am Peter, Petras. There's only one rock of salvation. So that calls into question the Roman Catholic Church. Him to be the apostolic succession of Peter. There's mm. one rock of yes. salvation, which is yes. Jesus Christ Himself. Amen. Now let's get back but to also the biblical rock. Christianity. But but hear me out on this one. He asked Peter three times. He asked him once. Petras, filio. Jesus. Do you love me, filio? Mm. Which means in your mind. Yes, yes, Lord. Ooh, hallelujah. Preach, brother. Cephas, Eros, hmm. do oh, you love me with your body? Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Cephas, Agape, Amen. do you love me with your soul? Yes. Lord. Yes, but um, counts, Jesus had been denied on three counts. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, Peter's but look. Body but, but, and soul. You've been completely denied, but after mm. Pentecost, that same yes, powered, filled with the Amen. Holy Spirit, wow. walked yes, well back said, into brother. Jerusalem and set the world on yes, fire. Yes, yes. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. So, but this this kind of but this kind of thing, this kind of um, this kind of preaching or this kind of wording, for people who are, are know are, of these verses that are already following certain mm. commandments mm. and laws. It's not effective for them. They would know what it means. This sermon is for people that do not know Christ. That's correct. This will be more powerful, but I know the verses. I know the Bible. I know exactly what you're talking about. So it has no effect on me. Uh, yeah. my, my love for God is already in my mind. I know the commandments. I know. I know. But, but yeah, that wasn't. Yeah. Aim, aim, quiet. Yeah. So yeah. if you are preaching to me. I wasn't. I, I was, was speaking blessed. to me. No, no, no. I was I'm so blessed rock. by this new. No, yes. I have never been aware of it before. It, it is awesome. incredible. It awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. But what I'm saying is he knew, Jesus knew everything before it happened. He, yes, knew yes. What, he was yeah. role-playing the yeah. whole thing. He was yeah. creating everything Amen. for people Ooh, to follow. Lord. Yeah. Right? So he knew before the time what Peter was going to do, Absolutely. what he was going to say. For him, this, this, this is like a code. He's setting up the future for the yeah. people Jesus, Jesus gather Lord. the sheep yeah yes gather the blind people and yes, yes. they will follow that path that he yes. created oh, yeah. yeah okay i so, agree with that yeah oh, yeah he so, had and, people that were oh, also he said you can be just as yeah. powerful as i am and Jesus <laughs> Christ, hallelujah Here, whoo, hallelujah praise the lord Here, here's here's a revelation here's a revelation in this praise the lord thank you jesus when Jesus had spoken, it is complete. Ooh, yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. When he had spoken, it is complete on the cross. It is finished. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. When he mentioned that, holy, oh, oh, holy, God is awesome. When he when he spoke those words, God had spoken in the very beginning, and Jesus had was only walking out the script. Yeah. So yeah. when Jesus. <laughs> had died on the cross and bowed his head and said, "It is finished." He had completed yeah, yeah, the work yeah. of the Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are just catching yeah. up to what is is going to Jesus. So, and so, oh, oh hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's not forget it started on a tree in Genesis. <laughs> yes, <laughs> hallelujah! Yes, it did. And hallelujah! Yes. Yeah, yeah. And the first Adam let, let, and the second Adam. I think he. And we, he how deep you want to go here, guys? I can Jesus. go on for days. Ooh. This is good stuff. Go ahead, Fancy. This is oh, good no, stuff. No, I'm, no I, I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying, yes, it's very inspirational, mm. but I knew this yes, all Lord. the time, but I didn't have people to talk to about this. I mean, I'm I know, sure. and that's what the Lord That's what the Lord is telling me, Fancy, about you. Even where you're at right now, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Jesus. Even where you're at right now, you've been taking up. Thank you, Jesus. You've been taking it upon yourself to quit what God has given you. But that's not of God. God wants you to understand the characteristics of love. God is love. Mm. And there are, char- there are characteristics that involve love. So if you would take for uh, just a sake of uh, speaking here that a tree and its fruit if the tree is rooted in love, yeah. its yes. fruit are going to be love. <laughs> if, a tree is, if a tree is rooted in hate, its fruit will be rooted, will be rooted in hate or become of, of hate. So with that being said, when you know the characteristics of God's love and the fruit of the spirit, you also will know, understand anything. The, Bi- the Bible says that my sheep know my voice. And a voice of a stranger, they will not follow. That's correct. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, with that being said, we know we 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 know not only not only for the, the that God speaks to us, praise the Lord, but we know the tree by the fruit it bears. Yes. So yeah. we also recognize love, and we recognize that it's not of love, which is hate. Yeah. And as Maya so wonderfully put yesterday, there's only two polarities: love and hate. And hate, That's it. hate yeah. is, really is and so the opposite of, yeah, opposite of love. Absolutely. Yeah. And so with, with that being said is that you have an awesome thing, brother. Yep. And But you need to connect yourself with people who are like-minded in you. God has given you an awesome gift, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord. That's but, it. but somehow, somehow, brother, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. You're feeling alone in this, brother, <laughs> but you're not alone. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, so you're absolutely not. You're, not alone. Yeah, yeah. you're right. And so no. God, God wants me to remind you of that. You are not alone in this, brother. Yeah. He loves you. Yeah. yeah. And he wants you to reach out, brother. He wants you to reach out because that's where even right now, there is so much compassion and love in this in this room right now. brother. Yep. I mean, just wants me, makes me want to just cry. But it just just this is God's love. It's awesome. I cried. We're all from, I cried yesterday. We're, we're all from different walks of life, all different backgrounds. But it is God's love that is being shed abroad on his people right now. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah, no. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and don't stop God's work, brother, because what you decided, because of the pressure on the outside, continue doing what God told you to do. God is art, brother. He is expression. Yep. Uh, I, yep. I hear you. Absolutely. I hear you. I hear I you. Would Thank you, God. I'd like to add I something here, Seven if colors. I may. Because Kurt is, is so inspiring <laughs> whenever he brings up the tree that roots in love will bear root. Two days ago, we have been discussing when was it yesterday? Worship. And what the Lord has revealed to me after yeah. our love conversation is that I really should have catered to people who were on the love then, who were non-believers, but they could they could experience awe and wonder over the creations and the Amen. signs and the and these miracles that are happening around us. They had awe and wonder. If you plant awe and wonder and, and it grows, it will bear the fruits of worship. They are one and yes, the same. Yes, absolutely. And if, sure. if, if you plant Amen. worship, it will bear you glory to God. And now we are back to Back to how do you glorify the Lord? Sometimes it is just so easy and simple by praising for anything good coming into your life, praising and being grateful and giving credit to God. And thank you, God. Yeah. It I know it is your doing. And it is not the pain, the, the, the accidents, the malice in the world that we need to go to and, and blame God for. But we need to acknowledge him for the good because he only brings good into this world. And that's already worship and yeah. glorifies yeah. him. Yeah. And also, Can, and also we have yeah. to pray. We have to pray um, for the blessings. And we have to, uh, uh, there is a time where you have to pause and you have to reflect. Um, we have to also try to uh, be sober um, about uh, what we are talking about and not be, uh, how do you say, let our spirit run away with us, you know. 
um, we have to because when when you are talking about this, can I say something to encourage you? Yes. Yes. Can I say something really to encourage you on the back end about Curtis said and Maya? Yes. About your art. Yes. Right. Yes. Hopefully, and, I, and I'm going to tune out after this. Yes. And I hope I hope this totally blesses your life. Yes. Thank, I, I thank you, Stevie. Thank you, Stevie. Yes. I, I I'll be praying for you on the back end of this, sir. No, I, and we will meet again. Yes. Um, and we'll be in a different dimension. Yeah. Come back on yes. I, I'm about to. I'm back about on to back to too. <laughs> of course. I'm, 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 I'm not here to promo what I'm about to do in Belfast. I'm about to do an international seminar in Belfast with some of the, the top motivational speakers in the United Kingdom. Please, Lord. And I need your prayers that God blesses this to happen because yes, Belfast yes, yes. needs a message mm. of hope. Now, some of these people, well, I'm a Christian and several others are, are Christians. It's not a, a, an evangelistic rally. It's not that. It's not a religious sermon, right? But the bottom line is, it's about your art, sir, right? Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, and hopefully this inspires you, mm. do you remember the story about Abraham and Isaac? Yes. Going up that yes. mountain? Yes, yes. I didn't mean Right? Yeah. And Isaac was his son at that stage. Yeah. And he was told by his father to carry the wood up the hill, mm -hmm. Mount Moriah. Mm -hmm. It was a three-day journey. Mm -hmm. Got to the top of the hill, and the altar was there. And he was told to sacrifice his own son. Mm -hmm. And the wood was put in order. Yeah. And if you look at the ancient... On the altar. It was the shape of a... It was the shape of a cross. Look at the ancient text. Mm -hmm. And he tied his son to that altar. And he lifted up the knife to sacrifice his own son. And God Almighty stopped him. Because he did it by faith. He was told what to do. And God said, no. Wow, you're so powerful. Sac sacrifice. Sacrifice the ram with its head caught in the thickets, mm. which is thorns. Wow. Mm, mm. What I'm trying to say is, Jesus Christ was always prevalent in the Old Testament. The Old Testament was the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Yeah. Uh, God, deep, he was always pointing towards the cross. And the significant thing is, Mount Moriah was the exact same mountain range that God's only son went up that hill. Yeah, no, and was for sure. But the cross is not what I worship. I don't worship the cross. The cross is... In I don't worship the, I don't worship yeah. the cross either. The I cross is the just a symbol. It's just a symbol. Jesus Christ. It's just a, and neither do yeah. I. And coming from a Roman Catholic background, I don't worship any graven image of anything in heaven or earth yeah. or under the sea. The, I don't stand looking at the The cross at symbolizes yes. death. I, the cross yes. is death in the Bible. Of course it does. Because death for my sins. and on the altar cross, it means death. Yes, but sacrifice yeah. for my sin. So res resurrection from death means he didn't die from that. He refused to die. So the cross is not important for me as a believer. What I'm saying is Isaac was Abraham's son. Mount Moriah was the same mountain range that Christ went up that hill. Yes, but they were the two, ram. They were the the, the ram. There were two Jews. Following. The ram. Yeah, I understand that. The, the ram, ram is the horn that they blow. The, it's, 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 everything is to do with Judaism. He blows the Jews. Blow the ram of the. It's a, the horn. I know, sir. It. I know, sir. I, I understand that. But I'm saying the ram. There was a living ram with four legs. Yes. With its head caught in the thickets. Yes. Which was thorns. Yes. And God had sacrificed that ram. Yes. Now, several thousand years later, during the Feast of Passover, the Lamb of God was sacrificed for our sins with his head in thorns on the cross on the same mountain ridge. It was always pointing towards the cross. It was always pointing towards our deliverance. Yeah, but that's why I, I said, mean, I, that's why I said he knew, we knew, he, 
This was already done. Yes, sir. It was done. Yes, sir. I, I agree with that. Yep. And, and you as an artist, what I'm trying to impart to you is, as, as, as Curtis was saying, he's away now. Your talent is a blessing from above. And we all have talents and gifts. And just glorify God with those talents because that's what all we're asked to do ultimately. No, thank you, Stevie. Just... Thank you, Stevie. Your words Stop. is very. Really... I appreciate it. I want to, I need to tell you something because this is coming through. Last week, after me presenting you with a difficult question, whether if your art is taking people closer to God, you went into this crisis for a week and you were willing to sacrifice your creation in order to honor God's law. Yeah. You were willing to do that, and today yeah. you were relieved from that burden. You had been given the permission yeah. yes. to continue and do your art, your creation. Your son lives. You were the Abraham. Yeah. You were the Abraham that was just given the ram. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, God. Guys, all the best, and it's been a blessing. And hopefully we can connect again at some given stage. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll Stevie, be, I'll all be the best for Belfast. Uh, Belfast. Yes, thank you. Listen, Stevie, the Belfast, <laughs> oh, I can tell Belfast, say, please unite and bring back the love in Belfast. That's what I'm trying yes, to do, sir. Yes. That's what I'm trying to do. But tell the people, tell the people, unite and bring back the love. We're going to be praying for I you, will. Stevie. I thank will. you very much. Thank you. Thanks all for the best. coming, Bye -bye. Stevie. Okay. Blessing to you guys too. Bye bye. Well. All the best. Bye. And fancy dog, you see, your country and your part of the world has its own struggles, and and Belfast and Ireland has its own struggles. We have <coughs> issues all over the world, regardless of where we are looking. He needs prayers because of the old-fashioned traditional Catholic Church. It's amazing to me that it is still has such a power over the people of and it, it's amazing <laughs> yeah. to me and then for him it's just just a miracle to to think above that as it is to see you thinking above your cultural setting and the religious um, environment you are in i i feel so privileged to be here and to witness these outstanding people speaking out of their heart, contributing to, as I said earlier, this is heaven. We are in heaven because whatever God yeah, was is heaven. Maybe next time you should actually bring a Bible we have to it. the black. We have and... the Bible right here. We quoted it several times before oh. you even came up. We had a Bible. Oh, okay, you go okay, back to okay. the beginning okay. and watch it from the beginning to see what, I will do that. I will do that. I will do that. Listen, Maya, it was awesome. Uh, it was nice to see you yes. again. Thank you so much for having this lab. Um, I really appreciate it. It's very inspirational. It's motivational. I think that a lot of people should come in here and join and listen to what you have to say. Um, you're a powerful woman. You're a wonderful person. You're a kind woman. I've never met anyone like you. This is my first time to actually, uh, my ears are so hot just <laughs> listening to you and thank you very thank you much. So much you know, fancy dog. this um, is the biggest compliment that you came back again and we would love to have you here again i will come here anytime when you call me i'll come because i support you i i believe in what you're doing is good and is right is the truth and so i will always be supporting you and be a fan thank you very much i am very honored bye-bye thank you, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Yes, <laughs> thank Blessings. you, everybody. Oh, such an amazing afternoon we are having. And now people are, are needing to take break to go to eat and take care of themselves. And other people are joining in. We already had worship. We had Bible study. We had incredible conversations. And then eventually, as I have written on the left side, as everybody probably noticed by now, 
we went from discussing biblical rest to actually living it. Beautiful rest and renewal in spirit is taking place here now and in joy. Especially because we have acknowledged fellowship and conversation. Communing with each other is also communion with God. Washing each other's feet. And it was incredible to recognize that true spiritual renewal is happening not actually in idle silence of doing nothing but of letting go and just allowing the holy spirit to lead our conversations and encourage each other nourish each other and feed each other i would like to invite some of you who are still on the line right now Please join me up here on air. I I um I am not ready to end the blob. And Lady Von Five, you would be one of the first ladies out there with me. I don't know if I actually did have a few for a very short time. But I would be so grateful if somebody came to help out with inspiration. Right. It is amazing what it can do for us. Blue streak. Is he? No, he's not here. Okay. It is so amazing that people in blood here can join from different parts of the world and be blessed by being able to relate to Jesus and his love from very different backgrounds of religion, very different convictions are being let go of here. I just witnessed a few beliefs to be let go. When we communed in love and our hearts opened up, I have recognized certain individuals letting go of old beliefs but only because love was present, not because intellectually they were convinced, but because the love was present, present, they were able to let go of old beliefs that they probably would still be speaking up for if the love was not there, on, just on the intellectual level. I believe what happened, I have seen several miracles to happen just this afternoon. And all started out about a discussion about biblical rest. Yes, we need to, we need to, we started out with talking about rest that we all need for spiritual renewal and replenishing our carnal bodies so that we could serve others during the week. This blood originally during the week is titled Biblical Entrepreneurship. But mostly what we discuss is related to service, doing, and work. And on this day, I would have liked to highlight true rest. How interesting that is that we don't need an extra day to sleep. We don't need an extra day to be spoiled by servants. We need a day to set aside so that we would have time for each other. This time that we dedicated to spend together here was set apart. We to, to be honored 
that it had been set apart by God, the seventh day. And we could go into a discussion about what day is the seventh day truly and really. But for that, I will let you watch yesterday's vlog because we went really deep into history and Bible text and searched our different religions to actually explore that very topic. And today I simply Yes, um, we had conversations here on the blog earlier this week with Muslims that were mind-blowing how much similarities and commonalities we have. They, they, they have, they respect the Torah. The Bible accepts the Torah and the Jewish Torah is, Jewish Bible is also Torah. Therefore, the Old Testament Torah stories, we can all connect. When I was talking about three days ago about the story of Joseph, the dream interpreter from the Old Testament, as a biblical entrepreneur, several religions could connect. They know the story. It's written in their scriptures. They all know the story of story of Joseph. Yes, it's in the Torah, it's in the Quran, and it is in the Bible. This is what we should be focusing on when we are connecting internationally, not on our differences, because look what happened. Fancy Doc has come so far from where our conversation started out. He was one of those people who would say he knows Jesus. He was a prophet. There is no son of God. There is no relations of God. And what he has shared with us today about Jesus truly opens up my heart. He really does know Jesus. This is where we should be connecting different religions with the same stories being in our scriptures that I could explain Bible principles but of business and entrepreneurship through the story of Joseph to people over in Israel through the Torah and to people in the Middle East who connect through the Quran to the same story this is bigger than I signed up for when I started this blog. This is way bigger. I, I have been taken to places, um, dear people who are listening right now, I've been taken to places that I truly call heaven. There is no reason why this room here in blob is not heaven. Originally, the word heaven means the dwelling place of God. Therefore, all places where God dwells is called heaven. Until now, I knew that God lives in my heart. He dwells in me, his temple. I felt like I was heaven. But now that I get to share it here with others here in this blob room, there is no way, there is no reason why this would not be actually the prophesied heaven right here. I'm so honored. I'm just so honored by every person who just in, decides to stay either in the chat box or comes up on air. Yes, court and lady. Yes, kingdom here on earth. Very much so. Very much so. Please come on. <laughs> you are welcome. I want to continue with me here. Yes, yes, beautiful. 
Now I'm going to have a lady companion. Haven't had that treat for a really long time. Hello. <clears throat> Hi, Lady Vaughn. What is your first Hi. name? Maria. Maria. Very nice. Beautiful. Thank you so much for having the courage to come up. Yes. No, I've never logged on before, but you caught my interest. <laughs> so it's your first so, day on Blob? Uh, my first time calling in. Oh, wow. I've listened to a, yeah, I've listened to a couple of blogs, but you know, just hanging out and um, I just put the kids down, and so I was looking for something to do, and I caught you, um, just speaking some beautiful truths, and um, I just wanted to come on and encourage you with those. And I, I feel that you probably are Christian, right? Are you calling from the United yes. States? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. yeah. But thank you so I am, I'm much. I'm calling from the United States. What's that? I'm, I'm just thanking you for being here. And and when did you start joining us? What did you hear in the beginning? Um, I just heard the end of this discussion, the two gentlemen that just left you, um, they were talking about the Ram and um, Jacob or, and Isaac. Um, so I just yeah. heard the very end of that. And then um, just you keep quoting, um, just saying statements like the spirits moving and um, the kingdom here on earth and really means oh, yeah, and experiencing Christ's yeah. love together can join us in community and experiencing that love together is part of heaven and I couldn't agree more. Well it was three different cultures. The okay. Catholics from Ireland. Oh that's interesting. The, and the Torah worshipping Muslim from Morocco. Uh -huh. Me from Hawaii from the Pacific Ocean. And then there was Curtis here representing American mainland. And every single one of us coming from a different background, different religious background. That's me. Connecting with the same stories. Connecting with the same stories. We even been able wow. to overcome Amazing. the barrier of different degrees of agreeing about Jesus' significance on earth. I believe Jesus was a yes. prophet but was more than a prophet, was also the son of man. But that was a difficulty for some to come to realize. And in the end, everybody joined together worshiping him. Now that is an incredible uh, step that happened just within a few hours because love was present. That's so true. Um, could you hold on just one second? Yes. I feel up in the boys' room. Put in the boys' room. I mean, it's in your office. It's in your office. Sorry. Oh, now I'm really dark. <laughs> Every blub uh, interviews and conversations and fellowships starts out a little rocky. I'm always a little nervous. How is it going to get started? And we get from from a very intellectual place a scholarly place, a Bible studies place, and we eventually open up with so much emotion, so much growth based on experience. It's, it's, this opening is just a real miracle. Yes, yeah. Um, I know I think it's a beautiful thing between the the blab and the periscope how easy it is to share now across the nation um, just new truths and having a better understanding of each other and where we're all coming from um, I think it's great to be able to connect with different parts of the world right away and then just have that aspect of understanding that we're all in this together we're all humans we're all trying to understand the world from our own perspectives and, and gathering a new insight and I think it's really been beautiful and I love to be a part of um, you know this so, new movement what do you do for life for living um, I stay home. I have three sons. They're eight, three, and five, and I'm a homeschooling mom. Mm -hmm. And they have a daddy who does what? He works in um, 
computers and uh, he, he's a digital artist. So you are both entrepreneurs, right? He's he's working for himself as an entrepreneur. Am I? No, he he works for a company. Company, but I yes. can tell you one thing: when when Adam and Eve created the first family homestead, they created an entrepreneurial venture. And okay. today, any parent who decides not to take their kids to the public school in my opinion, is also an entrepreneur. You take responsibility uh, I, yes. <laughs> to invest into your children. You invest your time, your knowledge, your research, your energy into raising your own children. That's becoming less and less frequent. It's not that easy to find. And uh, that, yes. is, that is a reinvestment into the future. Yes, you totally believe. Hello, Kurt. Oh, I have my mute button. Oh, there you go. Hello. Hello. How are you all? Good. Good to talk to you. Great. I love your uh, preaching or your discussion. It's great. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Have you been here long, Kurt? A little bit. About probably like 10 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear anybody you were talking to before, but uh, I gave you some comments about how um, Muslims believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. My goodness, there are brothers. Yes. If they believe that, it's man's, I'm telling you, denominations, even in the Christian faith. There's about 18 or tw- how many, about 100 denominations in the Christian faith? And they'll talk bad about each other, and 40, then Christian. 40,000 40, oh, different denominations in Christian faith. And then for Muslims to believe that my Lord was born the only one on in the universe ever to be born of a virgin, and we're fighting. It's man, it's our patheticness, it's sin, the division. It's just wrong. Then go to war over it and bomb people over it. And just there's, we're in a, you close your eyes right now. We're not right where we are. We're on a ball in the middle of a solar system. And there's Jupiter and Saturn and all around us. And my Lord is greater than wars and division and 14,000 denom- de- demonizations. I should demon. Demon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have answered that question to Fancy how, Dog a week that. ago what, because yeah. he asked me, as a Muslim, a Torah worshipping Muslim, Maya, I don't believe in Christianity. There is so many denominations. Oh. Can you please tell me why are there so many denominations? And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit turned to me and I did answer the question. They beyond my own intelligence because yeah. I did before if I was asked the question and that is just as God has confused the languages In, of the yes, Bible, the Tower of Babel yes. so that we could not out of pride reach up again to above him yes. Satan has never invented anything new he just takes God's tools but God's creation and twists it and misconstrutes it. Now, and just as well took that same tool, and because when he saw that how the people of God are going to unite against him, all of a sudden he confused the different movements of Christianity and the true religion and turned it into denominations. Just like the languages got fragmented, so did the truth got fragmented. And sure. now we have a denomination for every fragment of truth. My goodness. Hmm. Just a big old. Yes. Oh, but yes. you know what? God, Satan, do whatever he does, but God is above that. So in the end, I mean, <clears throat> God already knows the end. It's already done. You yes. know that. Everything's done. It is done. It's written. 
what will happen. We're going through it. We're going through all of this. We're not, we're not robots, and he's not. We have our free will. But my Lord, my God, in in the end wins, and Satan chained for a thousand years, oh. and then so on and so on. So I don't worry one iota. It hurts sometimes to go through it, but yeah. it'll be all right. Where are you calling end. from, Kurt? Arizona, Phoenix, or Tallis in Arizona in the United States. Where are you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am from Hawaii. Oh, how cool. I'm in Hawaii, but I was born in Hungary. Cool. Hmm. I want to go to Hawaii one day. I'm afraid <laughs> to fly, though, and over that water, my goodness, my plane would fall. <laughs> That's a <laughs> flight, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm going to swim and then a shark come and eat me. Oh, oh no. no. But your Lord is bigger than that, right? <laughs> yes, he is. I, he make me walk on water and fly or something. But, oh, I'm a, I just right. don't like Oh, I hate flying. Oh. <laughs> and I, someday I'll fly. Like Jesus flew. He ascended to heaven in front of 700 witnesses. And he came down as my Lord's uh, son in human form. And when he left earth, he flew, he ascended and floated and everything. So we're supposed to be more like him. I know during that thousand year reign of Christ that we will fly. We won't need carbon monoxide and gasoline cars. The cars will even fly, won't need gasoline. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it is beautiful that you guys are chiming in. Today, our theme was biblical rest. And eventually, when we were done with our Bible study and our real fervent discussions of, of cutting into each other's words, even actually we faded into this true biblical rest, which is fellowshipping with people who come and share hearts. When our hearts have communed here together, we actually reached true, the, the, the point of true biblical rest. And that is really the pinnacle, the crown of the day when we actually fulfill the day. We, fulfill we need to come it. together. Amen. We need to come together, Muslims and Christians. We both believe Jesus was born of a virgin, my goodness, what in the world else matters of uh, Jews and whoever else? Oh my goodness, I, I'm just, we're in a polluted, uh, uh, delusioned earth, almost you, like on that. I'm sorry, go ahead. Intoxicated by politics. It's a real poison oh. against everything that love is Money. about. Money and television even, even the 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 news station just it's not what earth you in the end is going to be it's not going to be all that it just division and fighting against each other and man sending bombs and oh it just back up close your eyes we're in a solar system and there's a universe and there go outside and look at the stars for goodness sake look at the moon yeah. go take a walk and holler I'm so oh, grateful goodness. you say that. Yesterday it was such a big discussion uh, on the scientific end of bringing people in that if you under if you are able to experience true awe and wonder for anything that's around us, when you plant awe and wonder, you will harvest worship. And when sure. you plant worship. You, what you yes. will harvest will glorify the Lord. Glory to the Lord. That's what we are harvesting after yes. worship, out of worship. He speaks through his nature all the time. And when we see those glorious sunsets or moons or oh the blood moons that were just recently, I mean, it's just amazing. You can see it in everywhere you look. Every, every snowflake is a perfect shape, by the way coming from the sky that's amazing to me to think if you look at a snowflake go to google and google snowflakes 
every shape difference, every one perfect from the sky, my Lord, great, this universe, something else. That's my Lord. That's true. That's so true. That's true. Beautiful is that. Isn't that Just something? like us, we're all different snowflakes. <laughs> And yesterday, I have been told that even those scientists and atheists, they experience the awe and wonder just like we do. They really have a lot of lot of awestruck emotions when they discover something new, and I believe right. it. I can see it. Now the question is, who they attribute it to? Right. And the question is. When they, and they have been told yesterday that the image, they, they can imagine something even be more beautiful than here on earth. Yes, oh me my. too. And I call it heaven. Mm -hmm. And they call it imagination. Like mm -hmm. that was supposed to discredit the whole point. It well, is not discredited. What right. God is not a made up God because my imagination isn't made up up no oh yeah because it had to come from somewhere <laughs> my imagination is revelation yes what is revealed yeah. to me will live in my in my in my imagination Karma. i have i have no interest to underestimate under under qualify imagination because it is associated of being made up how well, I was going to say it is the revelation of the truth, nature of spirit. Yes. Absolutely. Well, any revelation that you have that you think that you have is coming from somewhere and it's not coming from you as your personal imagination. You had to start somewhere. We were created in his image. So if we're just getting glimpses of what that imagination can be from a scientist's perspective, imagine what there is in store for us beyond all that. And how incredible it is that God has not given up on even those who do not believe in him, who resist, resist him, because he was sti he's still capable of reaching them through awe and wonder in what they discover through science and nature. Once God was able to accomplish that, to put that into their heart, that is going to evolve, that is going to turn into something higher, eventually it's going to be worship that's that's what i experienced that's how it happened for me coming from an atheist background it all started with awe and wonder transforming into worship yeah well um the uh, awesome everything you said the disciples asked my lord what is the kingdom of god like what is heaven like and he responded, well, you're a seed, basically. I'll make it short and brief. You're a seed on earth. As good as you can get on earth, you're a seed. In heaven, you become a tree. Imagine, as good as you get on earth, you're a seed. And then you blossom into a tree. No telling. I'll be flying and, and goodness. What would a tree, Curtis, as a tree, my goodness, what would you look like? <laughs> Isn't that amazing how in the middle of all the hardship and and misery we need to recognize that we have been planted and the seed, this carnal body, is to rot away, is yes. to fall away for that spiritual plant for it to come into existence. Yeah. I just know that that was from his mouth. I had a Bible in the old days, the anything Jesus taught, anything Jesus spoke, the the words were in blood, red, in that Bible. And he said, you become a tree. And I just know that that's awesome. And it's uh, surpassed all understanding. It surpasses all understanding what we will see. It just, you could only, we only uh, use 10% of our brain. By then we'll use a uh, hundred percent plus of what knowledge we'll have and what power and glory and my Lord, great, we become a tree. Yeah, oh, I know my grandparents all 
three of them recently died and my grandfather too and i have dreams of them oh glory and i know that mm -hmm. they're in that tree but i know everything works together all things work for the good to those who love god and are called according to his purpose and i know that everything going to be all right and isn't and that know. amazing that god's greatest promise for us is the tree of life yeah. sure absolutely it all everything going to be okay <laughs> It, it all started out with the tree, and it will finish with the tree, too. Sure. We all... No, oh, I can't wait. And then... Oh, I can't wait. I, oh, there's so much to tell, Lord. I can't wait. What do you do, what? Curtis? What, is, what do I do? What, are, you a, are you working for a um, pastor? Or? No. I work for U-Haul, U-Haul uh, International at the he corporate headquarters. You know those yeah. uh, trucks that go around and move furniture and move people. Yeah. That's where I work. And 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 um, where do you That's worship? Funny. What church do you worship at? I don't go to church. It's between my Lord and I. I used to. Um, I I was brought up in First Southern Baptist. In Tolleson here. Uh, those, but you are very well, welcome here every day at two o'clock Hawaiian time. We are here to, to actually do just that. One of the reasons I've created this blog is to have a, a place for entrepreneurs to work yeah. and a fellowship together. But sure. everybody is welcome because when I inspire people for entrepreneurship during the week, not on the weekend, mind you, today is about rest. Mm -hmm. I inspire them for essentially for discipleship because sure. that's what it is. Today, discipleship is being looked at as something we just go to church on the weekend and we fantasize about it. And then we go home right. and we forget it. But discipleship it. actually Call to action. Jesus called us to action when he yes. called us to the Great Commission. It's supposed to be service to others, serving his people. And here we are every day forgetting about it. But when we get down and we decide to put our businesses, which is essentially service to others, on biblical principles, we don't just become entrepreneurs, we become the pastors of those we serve. We become sure. the priests of our business. And we, we, we are disciples of Jesus first, before we are businessmen and women. Thank you, Nick. I really love your um, claps, applause. So welcome, Mycroft. Hello, how are you? I assume you're calling from London? No. <laughs> Mycroft uh -huh. Holmes. I think that is Sherlock Holmes' brother, right? His older brother, brother, that's correct. So where, is that your real name? No, of course not. It's a student name. I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan. Um, I have a really hard time understanding your audio, Holmes. Mm. Get on your uh, headphones. You're you're doing speakerphone, and that never yeah. sounds good. You could. Right. Yeah. Well, I would like to hear a little bit from Mycroft. What? Uh, where, where are you calling from? He'll he'll refresh. Yeah, I was getting bad audio, and uh, oh, kept going he, out. Yeah, it, there you go. He's trying to do his audio from his uh, speaker on his uh, on his uh, 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 screen. Can you hear me? Yeah. It sounds yeah. so bad. So bad. Well, Minecraft. 
I actually, he says he's from Collison, Arizona. I'm actually from Santan Valley, Arizona. Oh. Cool. Cool. Hey, now you sound great. Also, yeah, I'm in Santan Valley, sound... Arizona. Huh? I'm in Santan Valley, Arizona. That's awesome. I've been through there. That's east, uh, northeast, or yeah, northeast. Southeast of you. Northeast. Southeast, I'm sorry, south, going toward Mesa area. That, yes, I've been there. Mm -hmm. Been drove through there to Florence. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. So, how, yeah. Well, how, did, how do you do? What's your name? Uh, my name is Anthony in real life, but people call me Mycroft because yeah. I'm a bit of a know it all. I'm, hey. I know a dangerous amount about a lot of things. Um, so. Uh. That's why people call me my craft. Nice to meet you. Because you're the older brother. All the way back to high school. And I did. I didn't meet um. Lady Vaughn. Hello, lady. Hi. Vaughn. How are you, Kurt? Nice to meet you. Maria is my name. I'm blessed. Maria, nice to meet you. <laughs> blessed in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody <laughs> happy. Every time. <laughs> my goodness, these like politics. Maria. <laughs> so, Mike, what do you do? I uh, I run a small yeah. boutique investment firm. Yeah, Are you so at work? Staff made entrepreneur already, right? Yeah, well, working on it. I I have a few businesses. Uh, that's the main one, obviously. Um, I'm a wholesale broker of sorts because I I like to buy at wholesale, which means often I have to sell at wholesale in order to get those prices. Um. And so I find that uh, I wanted I, I, I moved out to Santan Valley because I wanted to start a YouTube production facility. And I'm a vocalist. I've been singing for some 30 years. Wow. So, um, I put everything together and I just said, you know, I'm buying all this equipment. I'm doing all this stuff. I just need I need 4000 square feet to put a studio together. And so that's what we're doing. So that's, that's why we're we at now. But, yeah, Are you at work right now? It's like uh, well, I work from home. Or something. I work from home. So let me see here. Oh, I'm trying to get the camera up and running. Yeah, and no better risk than to jump and let the parachute catch you. And that do you happen? I work from home. I run my own business. But works, where do you worship? Oh, worship. Uh, I don't. I've been kind of bouncing around between churches right now. I, I haven't found one that I really like. Mm -hmm. uh, I found one that was sort of close biblically, but they're very far away. Um, what would that be? Close biblically? How would you that's what I mean. That's um, what I mean right there. I, I, first and foremost, I really hate the way Americans worship in general. Um, My goodness, you're right. You're correct. Oh, hey. um, see, you have to bounce. To have to bounce around because the preacher don't give the right sermon. All of it just wrong. See what I mean? My goodness. So I, I, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I, I don't like the fact that Americans sort of bend Christianity away from the near East Asian cultural, cultural heritage from which it springs. You know, um, have you um, seen up this blob long enough to see um, other Middle Eastern people checking in? I, I haven't. I just I spotted you guys. I thought I'd jump in. Um, yeah, I am we not. Had some, we had some people here in this blob, but all week through, if you look at the earlier recordings, there is quite a few from the Middle East. Uh -huh. I was incredibly blessed by them. Fantastic. I think that's awesome. Cool. I'll have to watch them. Yeah, I, so cool. I, 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 oh, so anyway, I I think that I don't. Although I came to the gospel sort of via assemblies of God, I um, I'm really a big fan of C.S. Lewis and his writings, and that's yeah. really what kind of turned the corner for me. But I, I find that American Christianity is very puritanical. Mm -hmm. um, and Great it is time. very inbred. Oh. I mean, it is based on a Christianity that was kicked out of every civilized country in Europe, right? And we have guys like Thomas Hodge, um, 
and, and people who founded, you know, the whole Oral Roberts kind of a thing, not my bent. It's really not. I mean, I, God bless them. Not mine either. Those people who. We can't hear you. Can you hear uh, me now? You disappeared, dear Mycroft. I shouldn't have. Oh, yeah. kind of. <laughs> well, he gets that. While he gets that fixed, I want to say, even uh, the ancient churches from from our uh, Ireland and England and all of that, the churches were so built, so beautiful, all the interiors so lovely, and all the ceilings and the architecture. And in the United States, kind of just a, a church and a box and a windows on the side. It just seemed that we watered down things. I don't know. I just know that God is great. I don't know. I just know that we there's something greater and we've all separated and we've got so many denominations and so many separations and wars over denominations and all all our life. Even oh my goodness it's just been a and we all believe the same basically except a few things might be a bit askew and we don't quite agree the same on that so you go and shoot and bomb people i don't understand it my lord though it's supposed to be this way it's in revelation it's going to be this way so because of that i know with this universe when you close your eyes you're in a solar system on a ball balls around you and the sun in the middle, and my Lord greater than all the mess. So no worry one bit. <laughs> okay. I'm 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 so opening up. My heart is just feels so much with the words you are speaking. <laughs> Kurt. Yes, as we just said earlier, of a tree eventually will grow into into the spiritual world. The seed has to rot away, and it is true for our world. It's going to have to fall away for the new world to come to birth. That's what yeah. that's what the queen with the stars and the sickle yeah. of moon under her feet and the pregnant woman who is giving birth in the presence of the beast is about. This this earth is pregnant and it is in its um birth pangs. We can and here is birth pangs, and man has been put to earth to, to be the steward of the earth and all of its creations, animals as well. Now, if you went to my Facebook page today, just a few hours ago, I have posted a video that totally shocked me. It was a terrible experience to watch. It was a um, zookeepers and circus instructors how they treat animals and it was put together in order to represent how psychopath man has become towards animals we have originally been put here on earth to take care of them to cherish them and we totally diverted from that original purpose it is the earth is yeah. crying out crying out with, with so much pain for help and it is not only environmentalism yes it was the environmentalism too that is way more than that when we go into the corporate world the political world the industrial world they all need to be renewed they need to be reborn it all has to fall away and for the new paradigm yeah, to be born that's what we are here for, to nurture that space for that entire creation yes. to renew itself. Because we call ourselves the born again Christians, right? I uh, guess I, what? The whole I mean, world is going to have to be born again. <laughs> the entire earth. It will. It will. There, well, I believe. <laughs> Well, there's going to have to be the. Uh, there's going to have to be the. Uh, I think sometimes the, uh, war, the I final. Might speak. <laughs> but I believe. 
Um, go ahead. Go on. I think something that really frustrates me about worship in the community is that we get so focused on the afterlife and what comes after and the suffering that's happening now that we forget like my Maya like brought me on here because she was talking about heaven on earth. We forget that we have heaven on earth. If we have Christ in our heart and we have the dwelling of the Holy Spirit, there is something that we experience that nobody yes. else can experience unless you have that indwelling. And don't ever forget about that indwelling because if you forget about that indwelling and you look beyond and compare like, oh, this church building that or this guy's preaching that, it's not about the building. It's not about the church. It's not about the pastor. It's about what's living within you and the connection that you can make together on that and that's what really brings everybody together it's like when you get caught in that everything else like about the american church is that that almost doesn't exist it doesn't exist so you have to find it outside like that, that's what i was saying to maya earlier that's what brought me on because um this new technology that we can have that we can reach out and we can form new communities we're not designated into that like cultural setting of like just joining into like the church that our parents grew us up in or, you know, whatever, or it's forming the church thing. body, how we were supposed to be formed. But the funny thing is, is that occasionally once in a while you will meet God on the road. And here's a perfect example. Amen. Yes, um, I agree. Okay. And it's not that the person I met today was Thank God, you. but certainly God was indwelling in, in a very basic conversation. Okay. I am blessed. I, I, I admit it, um, things have gone well for me over the years, and um, I don't have problems with money, okay? Um, but today, I left my credit card at home, okay? I went to go buy a hot dog at the Higley and Maine Farmer's Market, okay? And I, I, I looked into my wallet, and my credit card wasn't there, okay? Um, oh, my Lord. And he had already made up the hot dog. I'm like, you know what? There's probably not. I had my backup credit card. There's probably nothing on here, but I'm going to try it. But I don't think I actually have enough money to pay you. He tried it. It didn't work. You know what he said to me? He said, I had a really good day today. You know, I'm going to spot you this and just get me back next time. <laughs> but the way he said it, I knew <sighs> that he was a Christian. Okay. Oh, yeah. You he didn't that. point it out to me. He didn't say, glory be to God. This is my day to help you. And, you know, mm -hmm. he doesn't. He just said, you know what? Praise Whatever. Him. Now, here's the funny thing. I said, I thanked him. I said, you know what? Trust. That's the sweetest thing you've ever I've, I've ever had done for me for a long time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, I will definitely get you back next time. Are you here every day? He goes, absolutely. So I go to my car. I keep no cash in my car. Okay. None. Okay. I am there to, to, at the farmer's market to buy groceries. I, I drove something like 40 miles one way to find out I didn't have any money, okay? <laughs> I rummaged through my pocket, right? I'm looking around in, in the seat of the car and underneath my jacket, <sighs> there is was the exact amount? The exact amount you need. Twenty-four dollars. Uh, yes. Okay. The ham, the hot dog, the chips, and cola was four fifty. Okay. I said, you know, the next time came around a little sooner than I, I thought. I found him. some money and I paid the man. Oh. But he could have been I'm rude. He could have been obnoxious, and he would have been right. You know, because I had inconvenienced him. I was completely unprepared, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But out of the kindness of his heart, he gave me something, and I got a chance to actually pay him back, which was nice. Um, but that could not have happened, right, without God. Okay? Oh, no and way. there are multiple mir miracles in there. You know, multiple miracles. I have one. When you're done, I have and one. Are so you I just, you know, you can meet God on the road, you know? Yeah. Yes. And just be prepared. And I find that the more willing and patient we are with one another, even with the, the people patience. that we don't like, because there are people we don't like on the road, you know, <laughs> sometimes you'll, you'll find God there, you know. Go I, ahead. Can, I can testify coming from 80s communist Hungary mm -hmm. several years ago, two decades now. I was not a Christian. And people tell me 
that there is no no church, no Christian church in America. I would like to tell you guys, my faith is completely being found in America. Praise God. Coming from, from an atheist country, I have seen so much love here that I would never want to go back. I you would know, never want so to go back to my, my original country. Uh, five years ago, when Google Plus started in 2000, uh, April of 2011, uh, I joined the community in June, uh, May of 2011, and I was the first avowed Christian on Google Plus. Okay, I was also the first avowed Christian apologist on Google Plus, and I spent the next four or five years arguing with atheists, right, that are born and raised in America, and they have no historical idea of what atheism looks like in Central European countries. Mm -hmm. what its history is, and how much suffering it brought. Yes. Okay. So I, I, like, I like to tell you there is a lot of love in America, and we need to acknowledge that and be careful. You, you, it's like you, you are like fish living in water. You yeah. just don't notice it anymore. No, right. That's exactly right. When you hear a young millennial talk about atheism or Adam Savage talk about atheism, I wish there was a time machine so I could take him back to the Cold War, right, and, and remind these men and women that the last time atheism held sway anywhere in the world, okay? What it turned into. Millions, millions of people died. Millions of people. Between 1900, okay, and today... Whether communist-based atheism or other forms of atheism, warlord, despotist, atheists, between Pol Pot, Stalin, um, the entirety of all Christian wars, okay, from the Dark Ages to today, is a much smaller number than the number of people who died as a result of atheism between 1900 and today, okay? Think about that. Mm. I don't care what faith you have, but if you don't have any faith at all, that makes you dangerous, you know? Of course, I want you to be Christian. Don't get me wrong. But I think that people who are without hope can do desperate things. Does that make sense? Uh well, I always like to bring in, and it is, I not like to overuse my life experience, but there is this aspect of it that for me, the greatest example after my, the, uh, after my 20s, the love of my life was, of course, my father. Uh -huh. He was an atheist. And um, it's amazing to me to see how his beliefs or non beliefs has bore the fruit of self destruction. Yeah. Uh, um, he, he, uh, Curtis, who was here earlier, likes to always bring up the example is if you plant love, you will harvest more love. If you plant hate, you will harvest more hate. If you plant courage, you will harvest more courage. Mm -hmm. Now, my father has been planting. Eat his beliefs and thoughts over and over again. And it, at the end, where did it take him to? He took his own life. Mm -hmm. For me, that is a living example of... Because he was passionate about yeah. his, his, his atheism. Most, not, not many people are just decided there is no God and they live their life and they never really open up that box again. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is like totally shutting themselves and numbing themselves from any influence because they're afraid that these questions are going to ruffle them a little too deep. Yeah. But if, if somebody is passionate, like my father was a very passionate man, and passionately believe in nothing 
existing out there, no moral and loving God in your life, a love that is greater than any human being can give you, mm -hmm. then that passion can drive you crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because the fire is still going on, but it is burning about something that does not love you back. Right. And so as a result, you consume yourself. You yeah, know? that's a good way to put it. Consume you yourself. Consume yourself sure. in the fire of your own despair. Yeah. You know? Yeah. God is all consuming fire. All consuming fire or of darkness or you you know. Know, the deeper um, and the more hopelessness you feel yep. um, from that depth. Yep. Scary place to be. It is. It mm -hmm. is. You Praise see, be to God, because that's the entryway to hell. I tell you, that is the absolute entryway to hell. You know, and you see, there is the all-consuming fire, which is God, and Jesus called Himself the light of the world. Mm -hmm. Fire does not go without producing light, and there is no light without the fire. So, what is it? it the, the fire burns in in a passionate man who is atheist, but there is no light to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah. kind of what a huge vacuum that can be. And I cannot ever be convinced that he upheld the same faith till the very end of his life to the last day, because it could also very well be that he was convicted of the existence of a larger God who all loved him and <coughs> repentance, <coughs> repentance itself that destroyed him. Could very well be. I can never well be. be I can never be certain about what was in lived in his heart when he passed away. No. Well, you can't. It's true. No. You know, but that's why we have faith. You know, yes. um, you, you know, I just know. have faith. I just know that we're in this vast universe and we're not right here where we are right now. I'm looking at my walls and my window and my door and we're in a universe. We're, oh my goodness, close your eyes. And from where my God sees us, there are not 20 different gods coming from earth, 20 different religions and Allah and God and whoever else and whoever else. There's one God in this universe. My goodness, it wouldn't be that and messy what? to have everybody all Islam, different. It wouldn't Islam be that also way. teaches one God. They just call it Allah and the Jews call it Yahweh. Why, why do we, why I do know we need Allah, to fight over the name I'm, of God? I'm saying, Everybody I'm saying that. God. That's what I mean. So why do we need to fight over it? One is one. Yeah. <laughs> one is one. We're a un we're in a universe. There is not going to be from of all. Imagine all the planets. All there's trillions of planets. More than that, quadrillions of balls. And from uh, Earth, we're a ball. We're just the same as all of them. And there be all this mess going on what in the world war bombing each other can you close your eyes and see that going on what a mess but, yeah it's a mess. my lord is I mean, greater. and the thing is is we neglect <laughs> oh lord look at it from god's eyes he's looking down at that little ball all the other balls are calm and silent but wars and bombs and and bombing people strap bombs to their bodies and bomb each what a what happened? My Lord God. What happened was the fall of man. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, and it's funny. Simple. Because, <laughs> my goodness if you think about it, the head of a pin, okay, goodness. is infinitely larger than the possibility that our universe, after four and a half, five billion years, right, exists exactly in this state, right? And that there's one particular blue ball floating around the universe, third rock from the sun, okay? Floating around. I'm out of here. That blue ball in the big scheme of things is actually smaller than the head of a pin from the perspective of an infinite God, okay? And yet, 
having decided to populate this planet, right? Full of people, full of life and everything, right? He set in motion from the dawn of creation, this idea that I'm going to give you a choice. You're probably going to fail that choice. And I'm going to redeem you in advance. Right? And so the, the whole yes. crux of the universe depends on the answer to the following question. Right? If I give you an extension of myself, the very most potent part of my being is God. And all you have to do is give up the junk of your life, the sin of your life. It's the greatest horse trade in the history of the universe. You get to give God absolutely nothing of value to you or to him. Because it, it gets consumed instantaneously. All right? You give it's like he's like the eternal garbage man. You get to give him absolutely of no, nothing of value, neither to yourself nor to him, right? But all you have to do is believe that you are giving him something, the sin of your life. And in return, you get to live with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit for all eternity. You get to live with him when life is over, right? Think about it. How awesome it could, how. I mean, the, 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 the chance that that could be, right, it's more likely that you could he visit every it. casino in the United States one after the other and have them just give you all their money as you walk past, right? It's more likely that that's the case than this is the case. And yet, God sent his only begotten yeah. son so that we might live with him in life when life is over. It's the best deal ever. You know, if somebody came to me and said, Tony, and we, your dog, his blood holds the key to saving your entire neighborhood from the zombie apocalypse. My <laughs> dog is my son. I love my dog. This would be one dead neighborhood. <coughs> I swear to God. Okay. When I look at God in the face, I will be like, you gave me a son. He had four legs. I took care of my son. That's a dead neighborhood. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I love my son. Okay. Love him. I have two of them, in fact. You know, I've had more over the years. I love my dogs. All dogs go to heaven. Humans, not so much. Right? But <laughs> here's the thing. God, every parent feels the same way. Every parent, human, four-legged parent, doesn't matter. Every parent feels the same way. And yet, God so loved the world that he sacrificed the very best part of himself, his son, his only begotten son, so that we might live with him from life is when life is over. You have to believe in that. It's the story is so good that you have to want it to be true, even if it isn't, right? Of it course is it is. So. Uh, we believe that to be so. Yes, you know. But that's that's the essence of Pascal's wager. It's such a good story that it just has to be true, right? You know, yes. because if it isn't and the atheists are right, we don't know and we, we die and, and it is what it is. But in the vast universe, I don't understand but if, if it is true and we believe, you know, but how 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 much of a lunatic does one have to be to realize that it is true? And yet <laughs> you don't want it to be. Yeah. Right. You just have to hit him over the head. Yeah, sometimes think, you just have to slap just, that guy and just say, just believe. <laughs> okay. just Get through your him. head. You know? Kick him in the ball. This is the best deal right. ever. You know? <laughs> what? No, believe that. Yeah. No, but um, I was going to say the uh, one time I had a miracle, I was at Taco Bell drive through and my order came to $7.11. <laughs> and I had $7 in my car. And I opened up the car door, and there was a dime and a penny on the <laughs> nice. on the on the ground. And I swear on Jesus, I swear that was that was my Lord mm. right there. Have you ever so you, have you ever uh, had the spirit uh, uh, move in your heart um, to call a friend or to um, I do something simple, 
And then you follow through with it. And it was like the exact right timing that that person needed to hear a word of encouragement or just a friendly voice. I've had that experience several times. Oh, yeah. and I learned not to ever ignore yeah. that nudge, no matter what time it is, if it's a quick text yes. or just a call. Um, the spirit can work right through on. all of us and encouraging others in the same ways. And, um, yeah, absolutely. Because you never know. You might have a friend who hasn't fully confessed that they're suicidal. Right. And they've got problems in their life or whatever the case it may be. Happen. You know, you make that phone call, you know. Yeah. And don't be afraid to chastise that friend. You put that gun down, I swear to God. <laughs> I'll come over to your house. <laughs> you know. Lady Vaughn, um, where do you, where do you worship? Do you go to church? Uh yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Where, where is, can you please tell me again where are you from? I kind uh, of Michigan. 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 Are you Catholic, Maria? No. Mm -mm. That's non denominational. With that beautiful Italian face. <laughs> no, I, not, far from the so Roman pretty. Catholic. <laughs> you do throw so pretty. Yeah, no, I just, it's a non denominational church. Um, and we do, we attend each Sunday. Cool. I lead uh -huh. a MOPS group there. So I, um, and invested in encouraging young moms and um, especially stay-at-home moms to live the life that they've chosen and encouraging their children in, um, in a godly manner. And um, awesome. yeah, and the Spirit's really been moving in my life the last few years um, with the homeschooling and whatnot. We started in the public school and I just pulled it, um, my oldest, a couple of years ago and so that's been pretty amazing. Um, just to experience yeah. life outside of that box, you know, just living. I already was a fish swimming up the stream, and now I'm really like a big fish swimming up the stream. So I'm um, going against the grain on that awesome. one. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Go against yeah. the grain. That's all that you know, that's, and that's been my walk, and that's one Probably. thing that I've always noticed is like um, once I found Christ in my life and really started to understand and have that fire that started uh, igniting that um, light that we were talking about earlier. Um, it's been uh, all against the grain. Nothing, there's nothing on earth that we're condone that is really like common to us. So once you get new eyes and a new heart uh, to be able to see, you, you see, see the, the truth. truth, you see the ugliness, but yet you can also see the glimpses of the friendly faces and the love that mm -hmm. there is here. Like Maya was saying, yes. you know, the love in the U.S. and Minecraft was saying about, you know, just the guy like if I him the hot dog, you know, mm -hmm. you probably don't even see that if you do not have that light in you that um, mm -hmm. spurs you on. My and it's that, that, it's that continual glimpse of god that i see each and every day in the hearts that i touch or or my heart being touched Never. that keeps me going against the grain because i because that's i'm showing somebody else's that that light in that way and so i don't really like to claim a denomination but i do um I do attend church just, you know, for community and purposes but you know, attend every denomination because there's god in there somewhere you know and, and, you know, here's the thing. I don't attend a lot of churches on a regular basis, but, you know, certainly Christmas and Easter, I do make it a point to, to go somewhere, um, you know, which I suppose would Thank normally you, make Maria. me a Christmas and Easter Christian, but I, I'm, I really am a believer. I just, I'm not a joiner. <laughs> That's really the problem. I'm not, I'm not a joiner. But um, I have some Catholic priest friends and uh, I tease them all the time. I'm like, every time I come see you Christmas and Easter, you're just a little bit closer to proselytism, aren't you? Aren't you? They're like, oh, how dare you? How dare you? I can prove it. I can prove it. And they know I'm messing with them, but they're like, what way? You know, I was so confused. But, uh, amazing Grace. You know, when I found. <laughs> and they're like, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. Why does that bring us closer to Protestantism? And I'm like, because John Newton wrote it. And his protege, William Wilberforce from the Anglican Church. Right? is the one who ended slavery in England. And he said, he starts tearing out his hair and he's like, I can't not play that. It's such a good song, but it's such a Protestant song. Oh my God. You know? So I tease all my Catholic friends, you know. Hey, that's a great song. That's a great oh, song. How sweet the sound saved a wretch like me. For sure. See, that's the whole thing. That's the, that's whole, the whole gospel. That's the whole thing that 
I'm saying that Protestant versus yeah. Catholic versus Methodist versus Baptist versus Mormon versus Muslim versus, oh my goodness, what a mess that little ball there in that solar system created. My goodness, what a mess. And my Lord, greater than all of that. My you know, Lord. it's funny, one of the best That's lines I've I ever heard say. about of a description of God was from a Sufi Muslim text. And the Sheikh talked about the infinite mercy oceans of God surrounding you, binding you, penetrating you, right? So that you are not, you are no longer separate from the mercy oceans of God that you swim in, right? And I thought, wow, that's amazing. That's some beautiful poetry, right? And how much more true is that for us? You know, for those of us that believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again on the third day so that we could live with him when life is over. I mean, that it I just mean, doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, you know, yeah. when something that I was reminded was like the gospel is just that. It's the message of, you know, the salvation message. It's not the words in the Bible. Like the Bible itself is not the gospel. It's it's the salvation message that's the gospel because the word lives within us in the spirit. And, and so when G we get tied into G the theology of things or we get tied right. into the denomination of things, we start to lose focus and understanding of what really powerful is in us and dwells within us to engage us into knowing all that deep in our spirit. We don't need to seek out understanding this theology or that theology or this guy who wrote that and the yeah. other and how to argue this or that and the other. It gets so muffled. It's simple a childlike faith simplistic simplistic and beautiful yeah, you know, at the same time god died he was divine he rose again believe go home <laughs> you know, right. that's, it. That, that, that's it but unfortunately we live in this world that's there's corruption all around but we can find hope in that corruption where others are seeking that's the true you know amazing grace you know i was blind and now i see and now mm -hmm. He can see love and truth and peace. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is that, that that's the life story also of John Newton. John Newton was a slave ship captain yes. who drove who drove the ship. Yes. And uh, he went, he later went blind. And, and in his blindness, he actually became a monk uh, from the Anglican Church. And, no, uh, no, that's not right. And then he penned Amazing Grace. That is not correct. He, he, that's, you're, you're, that's absolutely you're, true. That was not what happened. He, was, he became a monk. He did not become a he monk. He became a monk in ascetic monk. I did not hear that. I studied him. He did not become a monk. You're just making things up now. No, that's that's what I had heard is that he became a he became a monk. But maybe I'm wrong. No, he was a slave ship captain and had the slaves and brought them over and the Lord came upon him like uh Paul, when he was going to Damascus, and he, uh, Paul persecuted Christians, and um, my Lord just came upon him, came upon uh, the amazing race man, and it hurt him so bad that he did that all to those um, men of color uh -huh. and women of uh -huh. color, and, and he wrote that amazing grace. Uh -huh. But he was did not become a what you said. Well, here, let me read this to you. And this is from Wikipedia. In 1779, Newton was invited by John Thornton to become rector of St. Mary Woolnoth, Lombard Street, London, where he officiated until his death. And so he did indeed become a priest. And the church had been built by Nicholas Hawksmore in 1727. And Newton was one of only two evangelical Anglican priests in the capital. And he soon found himself gaining popularity amongst the growing evangelical party. So he was indeed some sort of priest-like object. Object. Yeah. You know. Um, I know that he did not become a monk. He applied to be ordained Man priest in the Church of England, but it was more than seven years before he was exempt, eventually accepted. So, um, I'm going to argue close he enough for government. He was shameful for treating the black people that way. He was shameful. Well, I mean, we've all I'm done shameful people. things, my friend. You know. Well, my goodness, so to 
to be a ship captain of a slave trade ship. But he ended up writing Amazing mm -hmm. Grace. That's great. I love now, that when, one. What are you saying? You, I missed it. You look back. You look back for more God looks mm -hmm. now. And he looked at that little earth mm -hmm. ball and a man that, uh, that was uh, bringing slaves to America ended up writing Amazing Grace. My Lord took a, took a, uh, look at him and he ended up getting a song in all of our churches mm -hmm. Ah. Mm -hmm. sure yep. did Franz Gruber the other my other favorite Man. silent night is that no, down one virgin mother and child. <laughs> um, when I was young, I don't know if you know, Bringing in the Sheaves. Do you know that song? Bringing in the Sheaves. Bringing in the Sheaves. Bringing in the Sheaves. Onward, Christian soldier. <laughs> we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the Sheaves. Yes. I always thought when I was a boy, it was bringing in the sheets, <laughs> like sheets out from the Line right. <laughs> and a girl with curlers, mama, bringing in the sheets, bringing in the sheets. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheets. And mama out there with curlers in her hair, gathering the sheets. And then the next verse, bringing in the towels, <laughs> bringing in the towels. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the towels. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't share that. Oh, our Lord is great. Close your eyes. You're not just in your room. You're on a ball. It's called Earth. There are all kind of balls around you. There's a sun in the middle of that. And we're in a vast universe. Go out and look at the stars and holler to God if you need to. Okay. My Lord is great. There are not 18 different gods coming from Earth. Allah is God. God is Allah. Everybody the same. Muslim believe the same as Christian. He was born of a virgin. Why in the world does man go to war and it's all that oil and war and fighting? I just, uh, it's all written I, though that this will happen. We're right in the middle of Revelation. Is what I need to apologize here, I'm guys, on. because I have been on air for nearly four hours now. Oh. I think. I'm going to close <laughs> this blob and maybe open a new okay. one a few an hour or two from now on. Or you can join me tomorrow okay. at two o'clock again. I'll see. Well, for those of us who don't want maybe want to leave, what you could do is give grant us hosting privileges so that we can continue the blab while you're gone. Well, you know what and the yeah. thing is that it is being recorded. You but can shut I that off. To suggest that how about how about um, you guys start another blob then right away? Just okay, we can do that. Why did why did don't, you don't. Uh, like each other, follow each other right away? I'm going to follow you guys, and then uh, who's going to start the blob? I'll start it. I'll start it. Thank I think I'm gonna. What is it going to be called? I think I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna go. To, uh, I'm gonna go. <laughs> okay. It was bye good bye. chatting with you guys. Maria, it was a lot of fun. And I highly recommend that you watch it from the very beginning because there has been yes. some very interesting, very interesting um, Bible study and then discussion. It was incredibly yeah, intense. Well. Yeah. And mm -hmm. every single one of you actually checked in when we were already finished. Yeah. So it, I would highly recommend that you watch what happened in the beginning. Thank you very much. I love yeah. you guys. It was an experience internationally to, to, to live long and prosper. That should be due. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. bye. You're precious. Bye bye. Love. Yes. Bye bye, love.